The Protector Chapter 51 Trey could not help but ask after listening to Nuv's words. Is Zoe the boss of that project, Lord Nuv? You're right. There is someone named Zoe there. What's the matter? Trey was astounded after receiving Nuv's confirmation. Nuv is in deep. Shit now. He warned Nuv cautiously. I am telling you as a friend, Lord Nuv. Do not meddle in this matter. Nuv was bewildered. Oh? Why is that? Is there something wrong? That woman should not be provoked. Let's not participate in this matter. Any more, Lord Nuv? Trey said. Nuv replied mockingly. Ha ha. Are you telling me that there is a woman? Who I cannot provoke? That's interesting. Trey muttered. How should I explain this? She's a unique woman. Anyone who dares to provoke her will face certain death. I'm afraid you'll not be an exception as well, Lord Nuv. Who are you to say that, Trey? How dare you belittle Lord Nuv? That's right. You're spouting nonsense. Nuv was angered as well. Fine. In that case, why don't you enlighten me? About her background? Who's supporting her? She. Never mind. I hope you will heed my advice and stay out of this. Matter. Trey did not reveal Levi's identity after he pondered about it. If I tell anyone. About this, I will certainly die a painful death. Humph. Are you looking down on me, Trey? Very well, get lost then. Nuv. Roared. You will regret it if you do not listen to me. Trey yelled before he was tossed. Out of the venue by a few men. Meanwhile, Zoe returned to Bayview Garden in despair. If this drags on, I will not be able to afford the rent without this project. What's going on? Did something happen? Levi asked. Zoe explained everything to him. He asked her after she was done. Are you sure they will be there again? Tomorrow night? Yes. I don't know who's the person orchestrating this. But their final goal is to stop me from proceeding with the project. Okay. Leave this matter to me. I will go to the construction site tomorrow. Levi went to the balcony and made a phone call after Zoe slept. I need some men tomorrow night, Azure Dragon. You should contact Kieran for this, sir. He's got plenty of subordinates. Kieran contacted Levi shortly after. I am the right person you're looking for. Sir. I've been training a special squad in Northampton since I have too. Much leisure time here. Their abilities are as good as the men we have in the base after receiving my training. I have a total of 200 men ready to. Move out at a moment's notice. Okay. Bring that squad over here tomorrow night. There's a mission for them. To accomplish. Levi answered in a low voice with a sullen look. Understood, sir. This is the perfect opportunity to test out their actual. Combat skills. Kieran's excitement was as clear as day. The five generals working under Levi were granted similar titles, but they had. Different responsibilities. Azure Dragon was a war tactician and commander, while Kieran was a demon-like instructor tasked with training special squads for combat purposes. Kieran had been training a new squad in Northampton in the last two weeks. He shortlisted 200 men out of 10,000 candidates. The next day, Zoe took Levi's suggestion and proceeded with their construction as usual. Nuv was made aware of the happenings at the construction site. He said. Angrily, what? They have the guts to continue with the construction? How? Dare they disregard me? Bring more men tonight, and make sure to teach. Them a lesson, Chopper. Feel free to disable a few of them as long as you do. Not kill them. Chopper nodded with a menacing smile. The Protector Chapter 52 
Levi requested Zoe to bring the construction workers away in the evening. He remained at the construction site with Kieran as they smoked continuously. While waiting for Nuv's arrival. Soon, a huge crowd arrived. Chopper brought over a hundred skilled fighters with him this time. There were no villagers in sight as they were not needed anymore. Oh? It seems like they're missing. What a bunch of cowards! Chopper! Jeered! They are fearful of you, Chopper! The other thugs bootlicked Chopper. Well, since there's no one around, we shall level this place. Levi and Kieran showed themselves right after Chopper gave the order. Aha! There are still people here. Are the two of you workers in this place? Chopper teased them. Yes. We are here to guard this site tonight. Levi took a puff of his cigarette. Chopper sized up the two men. Then he chuckled. Judging from your physiques and attires, I'm guessing you guys were from the army. Yes. Isn't Zoe looking down on us? Does she think two ex-soldiers will be sufficient to handle us? You over there, do you think you can scare us with that walkie-talkie? Chopper looked at Levi and Kieran disdainfully. The men that I've brought with me tonight are equipped with combat skills comparable to ex-militants. Beat them up, but don't kill them. Chopper commanded without bothering to do anything himself. Kieran held the walkie-talkie to his mouth and spoke just as Chopper's men moved in their direction. It's time to rumble. Whoosh! A flare shot up into the sky all of a sudden. Bang! Chopper and the others looked at the flare in a daze because they had never experienced something like this. In the next moment, Hurried footsteps were heard in every direction. Anxiety crept into Chopper's heart suddenly. Everyone's minds went blank as armored and armed soldiers surrounded them within a few seconds. Bang! Crack! Crack! One soldier rushed toward Chopper before he could react and broke his wrists. The knives in his hands fell onto the ground. Bang! 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 The thugs were nothing compared to the soldiers despite their experiences of having killed another person. Their wrists were broken by the soldiers before they could even raise the weapon in their hands. Then they were shoved onto the ground. In just a blink of an eye, Chopper and the hundred over thugs were left. Sprawled on the ground as they howled miserably. One of the soldiers came to a halt in front of Kieran and saluted. King of War. We. The Kirin's special squad, have successfully subdued all the enemies. Kirin looked at the stopwatch in his hand. He said with a smile, 59 seconds. You've barely passed the test. Upon hearing that, Chopper and the other thugs lying on the ground were scared out of their wits. What? Kirin's special squad? King of War. Are we in deep shit now? Why is the special squad here to confront us? We're just some ordinary thugs. Chopper's scalp tingled as the acknowledgement nearly caused him to pass. Out due to the fear. We are the leading gang in the circle. But I did not expect some special squad to be targeting us. Everyone understood the situation when they saw the lasers aimed at their bodies. Come out, snipers. Kieran ordered. A team of snipers appeared out of nowhere. Chopper was in utter disbelief. They even prepared snipers? Question their identities. Levi continued to smoke. The Protector Chapter 53 Chopper looked at Levi incredulously. He's the king of war. Yet he's so polite. To this man puffing on a cigarette. Who the hell is he? Kieran grabbed Chopper by the neck and lifted him up, suspending him in midair. I'll talk. I'll tell you everything. Nuv sent us here. Chopper blurted. Everything out as he was scared to death. Ask Nuv to meet me in thirty minutes. Do not make me go to him. Kieran. Smiled eerily. Okay, 
Okay, all right. I will make the call now. Chopper complied. Nuv was having the time of his life at that moment inside a bar. Any update? Have you settled the matter? The people from the Lopez family questioned our progress earlier. Nuv asked casually after the call. Connected. Something terrible happened, Lord Nuv. Chopper's panicky voice was heard. What happened? Please come here right now, Lord Nuv. We are being detained at the moment. The call was hung up before Chopper could elaborate further. Nuv roared after being informed of the situation. Gather all the men and follow me. Multiple vans arrived at the construction site half an hour later. Hundreds of thugs rushed towards the scene, with Nuv leading the way. They saw Levi and Kieran standing alone at the site while Chopper and they others lay on the ground. Who are you? Do you dare to tell me your name? Nuv asked coldly. Nuv was under the impression that he was the most formidable man in Northampton, despite sensing something was amiss with the bizarre turn of events. So you're Nuv? Who gave you the orders to do this? Levi asked. Who do you think you are? How dare you question me? Nuv scorned. Thunk. Nuv did not expect Kieran to take out a gun and aimed at his forehead. Moreover, the gun was loaded. Everyone was stunned. Even Nuv's body was trembling. No one had the guts to point a gun at me before. Nuv raised his arms in surrender as his legs wobbled. Let's talk nicely. That gun of yours is quite uncommon. I'm guessing it's for military use. Nuv had his share of experience in society. He could distinguish that Levi. And Kieran's decisive and imposing manners are traits seen only in military. Men. Nuv had once seen the gun model in Kieran's hand. That gun is specially. Designed for soldiers in the Special Operations Regiment. Kieran did not say a word. But his uniform was exposed when the wind blew. Open the trench coat he had donned. There's a star label on his shoulders. He's a war king. Boom. Nuv was mind blown as he gained revelation. What terrible luck do I have? To stumble into them. The lasers pointed at their faces did not help with the ominous atmosphere. An unprecedented terror filled their hearts. Clap. 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 The lights on the construction site were switched on the next second. They. Venue was suddenly as bright as day. Everyone finally knew the source of the lasers pointed at their faces. They saw the snipers aiming at them with their sniper rifles from afar. They were armed to the teeth with a few grenades hanging on their shoulders vests. Kneel immediately, Lord Nuv. They are from the Special Operations Regiment. Chopper yelled. Thump. 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 Nuv and his men kneeled on the floor swiftly. They threw all their weapons aside. Trey's warning reverberated beside Nuv's ears at that moment. She is. Indeed someone I should not provoke. More importantly, Trey knew he could. Not inform me about these people's identity. The Protector Chapter 54 This is a mistake on my part. I will tell you everything. Lopez family's son-in-law. Samuel, contacted me. I have the chat history and receipt of the transaction. Here, take my phone. Nuv knew that it was the information. Levi wanted to know. So he informed Levi of the truth about Lopez family's request. Kieran handed the phone to Levi. Levi's face contorted with rage after he scanned through the content. They Lopez family must have got tired of living. We were only told to carry out the orders, Chief. Please show mercy and forgive us. Nuv groveled on the floor fearfully. I heard you all destroyed plenty of buildings here last night. So it is your responsibility to restore the constructs. I want all of you to work here starting tomorrow onwards. 
Moreover, you are going to compensate for the psychological trauma you inflicted on those workers. Fifty million should be sufficient. Levi said firmly. Okay, okay, okay. I agree with all your requests. We do not mind slaving. Here. Nuv did not have the guts to reject Levi. He considered himself. Lucky to escape death. Kieran, the king of war picked up Nuv's knife and crumpled the piece of sharp metal into scrap effortlessly. Nuv's underlings were horrified by that sight. Our difference in status. Aside. This man can easily defeat hundreds of us without breaking a sweat. Let's not wait until tomorrow. You will start working here tonight. I hope to see some results tomorrow morning. Also, the sewage system is not installed. I assume you will handle that task. Levi added. PFFTT. Everyone knew what he was implying. He's clearly telling us to scoop up. Others wastes. But Nuv did not dare to oppose Levi's suggestion. May I know your relationship with Ms. Zoe, sir? Nuv summoned his courage to ask that question in his mind. Oh. She's my wife. Levi answered. Everyone gasped as clarity washed over them. Samuel contacted Nuv after Levi and the others left. How's the progress? Lord Nuv? I'm waiting to pay you the rest of the amount. Nuv exploded with rage as he listened to Samuel. F you, Samuel Robertson. My brothers are crippled and I almost died. Because of you. Mark my words, you'll face the repercussion. I will not forgive. You, just you wait. Nuv hung up the phone afterward. Samuel was frightened. Harry asked. What's going on? Nuv said his men were crippled, and he nearly died. He also mentioned that he would not forgive us. Samuel explained helplessly. The entire Lopez family almost wet their pants, listening to his explanation. This must be Levi Garrison's doing. He's going to get us all killed. That family is evil. They are deliberately harming us. Sooner or later, we are going to meet our downfall because of them. Harry Lopez slammed the table furiously. What should we do now? Fabian asked anxiously. What else can we do? We are going to ask them to apologize. Harry screamed angrily. The next day, Zoe, Aaron, and the other workers were dumbfounded after. They arrived at the construction site because there were already people working tirelessly at the site. Many constructs that were destroyed the night before were restored. More importantly, the people moving the bricks were covered with tattoos. Aren't these people the thugs from the other night? Zoe recognized the men to be the thugs that caused them trouble the other night. This is unbelievable. They may not be good at building things, but these men are great laborers. What's happening? Zoe and the others were confounded. A middle-aged man dressed in all black hurried over in their direction with a bunch of subordinates following behind him at that moment. Zoe and the others were terrified by that group of men closing in on them. What's the meaning of this? Aaron took out his truncheon. The Protector Chapter 55 Zoe was afraid that the men were there to stir up a ruckus. Unexpectedly, Nuv explained cheerfully. Nice to meet you, Ms. Zoe and Mr. Aaron. You can call me Nuv. I am deeply sorry for causing this mess in the last two days. So I worked through the night to restore the constructs we destroyed the other day. Moreover, you can freely utilize my subordinates. Until the completion of this project, I have around 200 men with me. And please leave the sewage system to us. Also, we will not accept any payment for doing all these 200 gang members to volunteer at our construction site. No one could fathom the situation. But Zoe had no other choice but to accept the arrangements. 
Zoe asked Levi about that matter when she arrived home that night. I stayed in the same prison as Nuv previously. We were close to each other, so he did me a favor. Levi explained. Zoe investigated Nuv's background earlier in the day. So she could verify. Levi's statement. You should not mingle with that lot from now on. The connections you have with those inmates are not desirable. Did you borrow the five million from those people as well? Zoe quickly deduced the source of the money. Levi nodded. That's right. All right. Let's return this five million once I receive the payment. Zoe said. With determination. At the Garrison family estate. Joseph gathered every member of the Garrison family for a meeting. Brian informed everyone agitatedly. I've investigated Levi's background. Thoroughly. The man supporting him is Nuv. He was imprisoned previously. Because he killed someone and was placed in the same prison as Levi. Nuv. Was released from jail one year ago, and coincidentally, even Trey has to. Obey Nuv's every order. Did you know, Nuv's subordinates are helping Zoe out at the construction site. Joseph said with a smile. Now we know who's the man supporting Levi. So. It's Nuv. Melanie asked apprehensively. Is this Nuv a formidable man, Grandpa? He is indeed a formidable man. It is said that no one can match his cruelty. And bloodlust. But Nuv is not the most impressive man. That title belongs to Jack Smith also known as the King of Northampton. He is in charge of the whole North. Hampton with hundreds of men working under him, including the Invincible Thirteen. Joseph clarified. Then should we be fearful of Nuv, Grandpa? Melanie asked again. Ben sneered. Nuv is nothing. It is as easy as ABC for us to kill him. However, we should be afraid of Jack Smith. Malicious intent glinted in Joseph's eyes. All right. The one-month period Levi. Given us is around the corner. Let's establish all our connections before I. Invite Mr. Smith over. It is time to face your doom, Levi. Ha ha ha. That's a brilliant move, Grandpa. Nuv will have no other choice. But to kneel when Jack Smith is here. I can already imagine Levi's dumbfounded expression in my mind. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed out loud. They thought Nuv was the person supporting Levi. So they wanted to invite the most formidable man in the underworld, Jack Smith, to intimidate him. But little did they know about Levi's identity. The next day, the Lopez family's representatives, Sean and Samuel, went to Meet up with Zoe. Zoe did not know the reason behind their visit. What's the matter? Do you need something? Are you aware of your mistakes? Levi beat up Nuv's subordinates and infuriated him. What's wrong with both of you? Samuel jeered. You should hurry up and apologize to him. Otherwise, there will be no end to this matter. Zoe curled her lips into a sneer. I see. I suppose you were the one to hire. Them in the first place. The Protector Chapter 56. That's not true. How can you say that? They informed us because Levi hurt. Them. You need to apologize to him right away. Otherwise, they will blame us. For his fault. You should take responsibility for your mess. Samuel said. Aggressively. Ha. Huh. Zoe laughed dryly. It is so obvious that the Lopez family is behind all. These, yet they want me to apologize? Handle your own mess. Zoe turned to leave after she said her piece. But Samuel and Sean swiftly blocked her path to prevent her from going. Anywhere. At that moment, a group of workers wearing safety helmets hurried over in. Their direction. The man leading the group was Nuv. What's happening here, Miss Zoe? Nuv asked. 
Stay out of this. You're just a lowly worker. Samuel shoved Nuve away. But Samuel and Sean were flabbergasted to see Nuve's face after he took off his helmet. Lord, Lord Nuve, what are you doing here? They were in utter disbelief. Beat them up. Nuve barked an order and countless men rushed to Nuve's side to give Samuel and Sean a good beating. Don't worry, Miss Zoe. I will handle the security in the construction site from now on. No one will dare to step one toe out of line in this place. After that, the Lopez family guessed there was a friendly connection between Nuve and Levi since they stayed in the same prison. On the other hand, Levi decided to look past that matter temporarily for Zoe's sake. Soon it was the seventh, the last day of a long holiday. Chloe contacted Levi to remind him to attend the high school reunion. I am going to attend a high school reunion now. So I might return home a little late tonight. Levi and Zoe were not in the same class during high school. Moreover, Zoe was busy, so she did not have the time to attend the gathering. All right. Go ahead then. Are you sure you want to wear that outfit? Zoe had to ask after she saw the casual clothes on Levi. Levi shrugged. It's fine. Levi saw Chloe exited the sales center after he walked out of the neighborhood. Chloe drove her car in Levi's direction after he waved at her. She's driving a Porsche Panamera. Her future husband will be a remarkable man, judging from this expensive car she bought for herself at this young age. At the very least, her future husband must be an executive from a large company or multinational corporation because an average Joe will not satisfy someone like her. Levi thought to himself. Chloe got out of the car and asked with a smile. I thought you would bring Zoe to the reunion. She's busy, and it's not her class anyway. So there's no need for her to tag along. Levi explained. Why don't we go together? Chloe sounded Levi out. Sure. Levi had originally wanted to call Azure Dragon to send the car over. After he exited the neighborhood. But he changed his mind after seeing. Chloe. Chloe thought Levi did not want to drive because of the inconvenience. I will. Not be surprised even if he drives a car that's worth a billion. He did spend. Fifty million so casually, after all. Actually. He's handsome even if he takes a cab. That's the way wealthy people try to experience a commoner's life. There will always be an explanation to justify Levi's actions because he's a billionaire. Were you released from prison a long time ago? Chloe asked curiously. Levi was a little surprised. She's the first person to raise suspicion about my early release. You're right. Levi answered. What kind of business have you been doing all these years? Chloe fixated. Her gaze on Levi despite her duty as the driver. I've been dealing with firearms, Levi said. Firearms are the most common. Things within my reach in the last few years. It's not a bad idea to use it as a cover up since I'm familiar with the topic. Oh. No wonder. The Protector Chapter 57 The high school reunion was hosted at the Royal Hotel. Although the place was not as extravagant as the revolving restaurant, a table reservation cost at least 10 to 20,000. So the Royal Hotel was considered a lavish diner. For someone receiving an average amount of salary, a meal there would cost three to four months of their monthly earnings. Not everyone in their class was so lucky in life. Some were doing good, while some were barely holding their life together. A few men clad in suits were welcoming newcomers near the hotel entrance. They crowded around Chloe's Porsche Panamera upon her arrival. Oh? Isn't this the prettiest girl in our class? I heard you're earning a few million a year. 
I guess that's true since you're driving a Porsche. A few male. Classmates began to bootlick. Chloe flashed a shy smile upon hearing the compliments. But the smile on everyone's faces froze when they saw Levi getting out of the passenger seat. They did not expect Levi to attend the reunion, not to mention coming to the venue alongside Chloe. Oh, it's Levi, the influential figure back in the day. A well-dressed man. Broke the awkward silence. He was the class monitor, Jed Barrett. Even though he was the class monitor, Levi had always outshone him in the past. So Jed spent his younger days chasing behind Levi, trying to match up with Levi's accomplishments. Jed successfully entered one of the top universities and is currently working in a multinational corporation after graduation. He was rumored to be earning a few million a year as well. Jed's car was a pricey Range Rover. He was one of the high achievers in the class. Levi greeted him with a smile. We thought you wouldn't come, Levi. A few other classmates asked. Shockingly. Jed rolled his eyes at the person who asked the question. Levi is not a narrow-minded person. He's not someone to be bothered by his current situation. Everyone discussed Levi's matter in the private room earlier. They shared a similar opinion that Levi would not attend the reunion because he would be too ashamed to face everyone else due to his recent imprisonment. But who would have thought Levi showed up in the end? You're right. Levi is a tough guy. We will never be able to reach his standard. The other classmates laughed. They were implying Levi's presence as a show of his shamelessness. Jed strode past Levi and came to a halt in front of Chloe. You're finally here. Chloe. Come, follow me into the room now. Everyone is waiting for you. Jed was interested in Chloe. He knew Chloe was still single, so he deliberately organized the gathering since he had the ability and qualification to pursue her. Everyone crowded around Chloe and disregarded Levi. Shall we? Chloe stopped to address Levi before he followed them into the hotel. Many people had already arrived on the third floor of the Royal Hotel. Some of them even brought along their partners. So the venue was much livelier than Levi expected. Everyone stood up to welcome Chloe, especially the men. Chloe was a beauty, a successful beauty, nonetheless. So she was shining. Brighter than ever in everyone's eyes. Levi looked for a random seat and sat down. Are my eyes deceiving me? Isn't that Levi? One of the men, Wayne Warren. Exclaimed. It's really him. Levi is here. Everyone turned to look at Levi all of a sudden. Levi was once the most affluent among his peers, the dark horse in the city's business world right after he graduated from university. He was a man with a net worth of over a billion, admired by women and envied by the men. But after his downfall at the Garrison family's hand, Levi became the most despicable person in everyone's mind. They rebuked and insulted him as much as they looked up to him in the past. The Protector Chapter 58 Didn't I told you all that Levi will certainly cause trouble, but none of you believed me. That's right. Levi is a beast. He took advantage of his sister-in-law and almost murdered his parents. His nature was clear as day from the arrogance he displayed in university. These were the words that were exchanged in the private room before Levi's arrival. Wayne and a few of his classmates were jealous of Levi's accomplishments in the past, so they never liked him. But they did not have the opportunity to vent their resentment then. It wasn't until now that the gathering provided them with the perfect opportunity. What are you doing hiding among the girls, Levi? Join us at our table and tell us everything that happened to you in prison. Ha ha ha. Everyone burst into laughter as they eyed Levi disdainfully. 
I heard you were jobless and stayed with your mother-in-law after you were released from prison. Someone sneered. I heard every large corporation in Northampton has blacklisted Levi, so it's not surprising for him to be jobless even with his capabilities. A girl added in a diminished tone. It was at that moment did Levi found out that the companies in North Hampton had blacklisted him. Wayne laughed. Let me offer you a job. My company is hiring for security. Guard's position. The pay is 4000 with accommodation and meals. Provided. You should qualify for that job with your physique. Chloe could no longer stand listening to their mockeries. Stop teasing him. He's got his own career now. Career? Don't tell me that you're his sugar mummy now, Chloe. Both of you. Arrived together, after all. Wayne spoke without filtering his thoughts. But he quickly fell silent when he caught Jed's eye. Let's all move on to other topics of conversation. Chloe insisted. Everyone took their seat afterward. Levi was rooted in his seat while Chloe sat beside him. Wayne whispered beside Jed's ear. Chloe is infatuated with Levi. She's sticking up to him even in his current condition. You should try harder, Jed. Jed sneered. Don't worry. I'll never lose to a criminal like him. Levi was surrounded by pretty girls. On his other side was Lena, whose beauty was second only to Chloe in their class. Lena was a beautiful and rich girl from a wealthy family with assets over a billion. On top of her good looks, Lena was good in her studies as well. She had always been fond of Levi and sympathized with his tragedy. Levi, why don't you join my father's company as a technical advisor? The basic salary is 8,000 with additional bonuses. There are plenty of opportunities to receive a promotion too. Lena handed a name card to Levi. Okay. Thanks. Levi accepted the name card because Lena offered him the position out of goodwill. Chloe smirked beside Levi. Based on his current net worth, he should have more than enough money to purchase the company owned by Lena's father. The other girls on the other hand, were not as kind towards Levi as Chloe and Lena. We thought you would bring Zoe along with you. Where is she? That's impossible. Now that Levi's been reduced to a sorry state, Zoe won't tag along with him. She will not want to embarrass herself. You're absolutely right. Even I'm feeling ashamed to be referred to as Levi's ex-classmates. The Levi now had become the perfect example of a man who should be avoided by all girls. Why aren't we starting? Is there anyone else who's coming? Chloe hurriedly distracted others' attention. The star for tonight's reunion has yet to arrive. A thought popped into Chloe's mind. Don't tell me Stefan is coming. That's right. Stefan is attending too. Levi remembered Stefan Simmons. His father was the director of a department in the district council. Even the headmaster had to condone Stefan's behavior. He managed to enter one of the top universities, albeit having failed most of his examinations. The Protector Chapter 59 You might not know this, but Stefan's father received a promotion. He's now the chief of the district council. So everyone must wait for him to arrive. Jed's achievements and Lena's family background are nothing compared to Stefan's influence. The statement sounded like an exaggeration, but that was the truth. Everyone was not familiar with the concept of societal hierarchy during their university years. But now, after a few years of working in the society, they were made aware of the authority a high-ranking officer in governmental departments held especially the chief of a district. The status of being the son of a district council's chief toppled all other personal achievements in the room combined because power will always be more coveted than money. Soon, 
everyone stood up when they heard voices from the hallway. Jed was especially passionate as he was the first person to welcome Stefan. Stefan was dressed lavishly in Armani clothes, Gucci belt, Versace shirt. Patek Philippe wristwatch. The items on his person added up to millions. A gorgeous lady with a slender figure like that of a model followed by his. Side. Her voluptuous figure and long legs that were wrapped in black stockings. Stunned everyone inside the room. You're finally here, Stefan. Jed welcomed Stefan with a bear hug in. Excitement. I see you're doing well, Jed. You're already wearing an Omega watch. Stefan said with a smile after he saw Jed's wristwatch. Jed glanced at the gorgeous girl next to Stefan. Aren't you going to? Introduce the pretty lady to us, Stefan. She's just a random girl. Stefan said nonchalantly. Stefan did not care to establish a proper relationship as he would change. Partner regularly. Wayne's eyes gleamed. She's a model. I saw her on television before. The woman acted more arrogantly after Wayne acknowledged her fame. Others merely looked at Stefan in envy. He can easily lay his hands on a model that we can only see on television. Wayne shuffled forward eagerly. Do you remember me, Stefan? I'm Wayne. I used to fight for your sake in the past. Of course. You're Wayne. Stefan nodded. Stefan's affirmation made Wayne excited. He raised his voice to the others. Inside the room. Stefan remembers me. Did all of you hear that? Stefan, my company is currently developing a new project, requiring approval from the district council. I hope you will assist me to speed up the process. Wayne seized the opportunity to ask for a favor. Sure. Consider it done. Do you need a chauffeur or bodyguard, Stefan? Wayne's best friend. Robin, asked immediately. Stefan joked. I do need a watchdog. No problem. I'm the right person for the job. Woof woof, Robin mimicked. The sound of a dog shamelessly. It was his lifelong dream to become. Stefan's pet. Chloe was disgusted by the brazen demeanor of her classmates to butter up. Stefan. Stefan scanned the surroundings after he entered the room. By the way. Where is the criminal who took advantage of his sister-in-law, the pride of our class? Is he here? Ha ha ha. Of course he's here. He's been blacklisted by every company in the city. He must be desperate to look for your help, Stefan. Wayne suggested. Hastily. Jed looked at Levi. Are you looking down on Stefan? Aren't you going to? Greet Stefan now that he's here. Stefan said mockingly. Oh, please don't do that. Levi's a famous person in the city back in the day. I am not qualified to be greeted by him. My father even mentioned him a few times and asked me to learn from him. Perhaps he could teach me a few tricks about taking advantage of helpless girls. Ha ha ha. Everyone laughed out loud as well. Wayne glared at Levi. What are you doing? Did you not hear what Stefan said? You should build a good rapport with Stefan, so he could help you to look for a job that pays well and tick your name off from the blacklist. But Levi merely sat in his chair without moving a muscle. The Protector Chapter 60 Lena and Chloe were already in an upright position. Chloe signaled Levi relentlessly with her eyes. I know Levi is very wealthy. And has connections. But he's facing Stefan Simmons now, the son of the district council's chief. I do not think Levi has the capability to stand against that kind of authority. Northampton is a commercial zone, so the district's chief has an unimaginable influence in this area. What are you doing just sitting there, Levi? Get up immediately. Do you expect Stefan to greet you instead? 
Wayne and Robin gave Levi an earful for the way he was behaving. They even had the urge to drag Levi off his seat. Jed grimaced as well. You should show some proper manners, Levi. Levi merely lit a cigarette and took a puff while disregarding the farce occurring before his eyes. Fury glinted in Stefan's eyes as he looked at Levi. His rage intensified upon noticing the pretty ladies sitting on Levi's sides. I've always wanted to sleep with Lena and Chloe. But my plans got ruined by Levi. Back in the day, everyone knew the situation was turning south upon sensing Stefan's wrath. Jed panicked. Levi is courting death. Stefan's girlfriend, Crystal, said coquettishly, Hubby, this person is so arrogant. He's not taking you seriously at all. Stefan's expression turned grim. Everyone has always treated me with respect wherever I go all these years. Get up. That's not where you're supposed to sit. Stefan jeered at Levi. A dreadful silence filled the air inside the room as everyone held there. Breaths unwittingly. He's done it now, nothing good ever comes from. Infuriating Stefan Simmons. But Levi merely sat motionless and ignored Stefan's existence. I'll repeat myself. Get up and get lost. Stefan ordered harshly. I was not. Afraid of Levi when he was at his peak six years ago, much less now that he's. Fresh out of prison. My status is my biggest asset to back me up. Levi puffed on his cigarette without saying a word while looking at Stefan. And Crystal. Menace flashed across Crystal's face as she grabbed a glass of water and poured the content on Levi. Are you incapable of comprehending human language? It's time for you to get lost. Are you deaf? Crystal shrieked. Everyone did not expect things to progress to that stage. Jed hurriedly tried to smooth the situation over. Hurry up and apologize to Stefan, Levi. Then we'll look past this incident. Wayne added. That's right. Kneel on the floor and ask sincerely for Stefan's forgiveness. I'm sure he will show you mercy. Everyone condemned Levi as they sided with Stefan. Chloe and Lena looked at the crowd incredulously. Stefan and his girlfriend are at fault here. She even poured water on Levi, yet they want Levi to kneel and apologize. This is unreasonable and unacceptable. But Stefan always assumed he was in the right because of his unique status. Levi put out the cigarette he was smoking. Then he met with Stefan's eyes and said casually, Ask your father to apologize to me in person. Otherwise, I will not let you off. What? You want Stefan's father to apologize to you? Everyone was completely dumbfounded by Levi's request. They were dazed. For some time before slowly regaining their senses. Are you crazy, Levi? Do you know who Stefan's father is? Do you think you are qualified to receive his apology. That's right. Who do you think you are? Why is there a need for the district? Council's chief to apologize to you. You're just a lowly criminal recently released from prison. Know your place. Wayne, Robin, and the others were going all out to insult Levi at that point. The Protector Chapter 61 Even Chloe, who was slightly aware of Levi's capabilities, thought he was mad. You are rich and packed with connections. But Stefan's father is the chief of the district council. Are you out of your mind to ask him to apologize? To you? Are you seeking death? Chloe did not expect Levi to be so full of himself. Stefan nearly exploded with rage when he heard Levi's words. He stretched out his hand to slap Levi's face. But Levi grabbed Stefan's hand in a split second and twisted his wrist. Then he kicked at Stefan's knee. Arg. Stefan wailed in pain and fell heavily in front of Levi on his knees. Clap. Levi swiftly dragged Crystal and slapped her forcefully, 
causing her to fall. Onto the floor. The couple knelt before Levi in just a few seconds. What are you doing, Levi? How dare you hurt Stefan? Did you get tired of living? You're out of your mind, Levi. Jed and Wayne yelled and rushed forward at the same time as Levi slapped Stefan across his face. Ah! Ah! Both men screamed blue murder. Stop right there! Levi commanded. Everyone stayed still and looked at Levi in disbelief. Chloe was already shivering fearfully. Levi patted Stefan's cheek. You better contact your father immediately. And ask him to apologize to me. Stefan hurriedly fished out his phone and made the call. Father, come. Save me. Hurry up. Levi snatched the phone from Stefan and said with a smile before the other. Party could speak. You're Draco Simmons, right? You better come here and... Apologize to me swiftly. Oh, by the way, my name is Levi Garrison. He's mad. He must be nuts. Levi has now become a lunatic in everyone's mind. He's blatantly provoking Stefan's father. Malicious intent glinted in Stefan's eyes as he smiled wickedly at Levi after. The latter hung up the phone call. You're doomed, Levi Garrison. I will let you. Suffer along with Zoe and her entire family. I will never let you off the hook. Levi did not say a word and instead grabbed a fork and stabbed Stefan's. Thigh. Arg, a horrible and hysterical scream rang inside the private room. Stefan wanted to threaten Levi further. But he shut his mouth obediently. Upon meeting with Levi's eyes. Everyone shared a similar thought at that moment. Levi's as good as a piece. Of dead meat now. Chloe was shocked to her core. I did not expect Levi to destroy his own life. Like this. No one can save him now. She leaned closer and whispered beside Levi's ear. You should escape now. Run as far as you can from this place. Levi smiled. Why should I? I am still waiting for my apology. Chloe was rendered speechless. About twenty minutes later, rows of cars were parked outside the Royal Hotel. As a horde of people rushed into the building. Stefan was invigorated when he heard the thundering footsteps in the hallway. Jed, Wayne, and the others were excited as well. A group of men clad in suits and ties dashed into the room. An extraordinary air and overwhelming presence enveloped the body of the middle-aged man. Leading the group. The man in lead was none other than Draco Simmons. They hastened their footsteps after seeing Stefan and Crystal kneeling. Before Levi. Save me, father. He beat me up. Stefan begged for his father's assistance. But Draco took large strides and came to a halt in front of Levi and asked him. With concern, all the while ignoring his son. Are you all right? The Protector Chapter 62 Draco's subordinates did not have the courage to look at Stefan and Crystal. They focused all their attention on Levi. Are you all right? We were so worried when we received the news. They said. In a hurry. Everyone else inside the room was flabbergasted. Stefan was in utter disbelief. I'm your son, father. I'm the one who's. Injured. But Draco fixated his gaze on Levi despite Stefan's effort to express his. Grievances. I'm fine. But my clothes are soiled. Levi answered. Everyone saw the visible wet stain on Levi's clothes. Draco was infuriated. He scanned the room and asked angrily. Who did this? Who's the one that poured water all over him? The other subordinates raised their voices as well. Who's the daredevil? Those in the know gazed at Crystal simultaneously. Crystal lowered her head as her body trembled visibly. Draco grabbed Stefan by his collar and slapped him mercilessly. You're a wastrel. Why do I have a son like you? You will be the cause for my downfall. Slap. Thump. 
Draco beat up his son furiously. He finally stopped when he was out of breath. Stefan was confounded. What's going on? Why is my father hitting me? I am the victim of this incident. Why does he concern about Levi Garrison? Instead, the other classmates were also bewildered as they looked at Levi differently. What's happening? Chloe was relatively calm. Don't tell me Levi's status is even higher than the Simmons family? Is that the reason behind his brazen attitude? At that moment, a man dressed in a suit entered the room holding a briefcase. Isn't that the head secretary of Northampton, Cedric Jones? You're right. That's him. The head secretary of Northampton City. He's the secretary of the most influential figure in the city. His appearance carries the same weight as the great Mr. Jesse himself. Everyone recognized Cedric as soon as he entered the room. But Cedric behaved similarly to the others before him. He walked up to Levi hastily and asked him with concern. Are you all right, Mr. Garrison? I am worried sick about you. Mr. Jesse left over ten missed calls on my phone. Because he thought something terrible happened to you. He's currently attending a meeting overseas, so he cannot come here in person. That's why he asked me to come in his stead. Hey? Levi's ex-classmates were astounded to their limits. Who is Levi? Garrison? Why is Mr. Jesse so attentive towards him? Oh my god! This is driving me crazy. Can anyone tell me his identity already? I'm fine. Jesse got worried over nothing. I'll treat him to a meal someday. Levi said with a smile. Yes. Sure. I will convey your message to him. Mr. Jesse will be pleased to hear this. The head secretary of Northampton is so excited because of Levi's offer to treat Mr. Jesse to a meal. Cedric turned to look at Draco sternly. What's happening here, Mr. Simmons? My boss wanted me to clarify the situation with you. This is all my fault. I failed my duties as a father in educating my child. This is the gravest mistake of my life for my son to offend you, Mr. Garrison. Draco Simmons bowed deeply in front of Levi and continued. I am deeply sorry, Mr. Garrison. This is all my fault. Please punish me. Everyone gasped after witnessing that scene. No one expected that the district council's chief, Draco Simmons, to bow so lowly in front of Levi. Stefan was dumbfounded. Crystal fell into a daze. Chloe was astonished. Everyone inside the room was stupefied. This is unbelievable. Levi Garrison's status is frighteningly overwhelming. The Protector Chapter 63 Tap tap tap. Footsteps rang in the hallway again. A man dressed in police uniform and another man dressed in a soldier's uniform entered. Jed voiced out unwittingly after noticing the badges on their shoulders. They. Captain of patrol squad and a colonel from the army. I know him. He's Stephen Shaw, the colonel of Northampton's 1st Metallic. Regiment. And that's Xavier Fields, the captain of patrol squad. Everyone's scalps tingled with unease at that moment. I can't believe Stephen. Shaw and Xavier Field is here. Both men were having a meeting nearby. They rushed over as soon as they were made aware of the situation. The two fearsome men came to a halt in front of Levi and saluted him. The crowd could not be more amazed. Who is Levi Garrison, actually? Why? Are all these remarkable men in society showing such great respect towards him? Even Mr. Jesse nearly rushed back to the country from abroad for him. Levi's authority is beyond our comprehension. A hint of terror glinted in everyone's eyes as they looked at Levi. The lowly criminal has become a powerful figure in just a few minutes. 
Chloe's body shivered as she stood beside Levi. Her legs felt heavy as lead. Rooting her to her spot. She finally understood the hidden meaning behind. Levi's explanation earlier. He said he's dealing with firearms. If I think further. From that perspective, Levi may be a high-ranking officer in the military. She did not dare to imagine further. Bring them away and never let me see them again. Levi commanded. Nonchalantly. Draco complied without a moment to waste. I will discipline this useless son. Of mine. He will not cause any trouble from now on. Everyone glanced at Crystal simultaneously. Crystal knew she was doomed. I made a terrible decision in offending this. Man. Draco and the others left swiftly after. But Levi asked for Stephen Shaw to stay. Stephen stood politely beside Levi, admiring his idol. Please give your orders. Sir. Stephen Shaw said. Levi scratched his nose before he said, I need 100,000 men. Next week. Convey my request to the regiment. Levi was preparing his secret weapon to defeat the garrison family. Stephen Shaw was shocked. But he nodded in agreement anyway. I will. Accomplish this mission. The private room was already cleaned up by the time Stephen Shaw left. They. Restaurant staff even changed the tablecloth for Levi's table. Everyone tensed up as they eyed Levi nervously. They knew Levi had the ability to destroy their future and career with a single. Word. Let's relax ourselves. This is a gathering, am I right? Let's enjoy the reunion. Then. Levi smiled. Chloe immediately took the initiative to smooth things over. Let's take our seats and pretend as if that incident earlier never happened. Everyone's movements were stiff as they returned to their seats. Jed, Wayne, and the others who sided with Stefan earlier were trying their best to diminish their presence. Earlier, all of them felt the urge to bootlick Stefan to win over his favor, but... None of them had the courage to do the same to Levi. They should be serving the dishes by now. I'm getting hungry already. Levi. Raised his tone. Levi helped himself to the food after the dishes were served on the table. He ate without a care for his image or any dining etiquettes, but no one had. The guts to laugh at him. Levi soon realized he was the only person eating inside the room. Everyone else was tensed and quiet. He got up from his seat after he was done. I'm full now. I'll take my leave. First. The Protector Chapter 64. Chloe wanted to send him back, but Levi rejected her offer. Noises erupted inside the private room after Levi's departure. Oh my god. What just happened? Levi Garrison is so scary. The head secretary of Northampton, the captain of patrol squad, they. We're all here. You guys must be so ashamed now, attempting to hook him up. With a job. Jed, Wayne, and the others were beyond embarrassed by that comment. Oh? Is this the cigarette Levi was puffing on? I've never seen this brand. Before. Someone picked up the empty box and asked curiously. You're an idiot. This is a cigarette available only for military personnel. Moreover, this must be a rare edition limited only to the high-ranking officers. Based on the label. What's his current status, I wonder? He's so intimidating. He's truly an impressive man. He was a successful person six years ago. Now, his achievements are even greater than before. Chloe did not join in the discussion. Mixed emotions churned in her chest as she felt grateful and regretful at the same time. Her phone rang all of a sudden. It was a call from Levi. Morris Atkinson did not attend the gathering today. He asked. Morris Atkinson was Levi's classmate as well as his best friend. He stayed by Levi's side throughout high school and their university years. Morris contributed to the establishment and success of Levi Group in the past. But after Levi was tricked by the Garrison family, Matthew Green and 
The others betrayed him. So Levi assumed Morris to have betrayed him as. Well since he was the vice president. Levi attended the reunion with the sole intention of meeting with Morris. Atkinson. But he did not expect him to be missing. Hey? It's only natural that Morris Atkinson won't be able to attend. Chloe. Replied, surprised by Levi's question. Why not? Levi frowned. He passed away, didn't he? Chloe reverted the question back to Levi. I. Even suggested everyone not to mention Morris' name at the gathering in. Advance because I did not want to dampen the mood. Passed away. Levi was caught in utter astonishment. Ah. You really don't know? Not long after your imprisonment, the garrison. Family and Levi group confronted each other. The news of Morris jumping off. A building was made aware to the public shortly after. It was said he. Committed suicide because he was afraid of facing the punishment for his. Crime. Chloe explained. What? Something like that happened. Levi asked astoundingly. I did not. Investigate this matter because I knew the Garrison family orchestrated. Everything. So I was oblivious to Morris' death. But if that's the case, perhaps. Morris did not betray me after all. Someone must have driven him to his. Death. It is impossible for Morris to commit suicide out of fear of. Punishments. All right. I understand now. Levi hung up the phone. Then he contacted Azure Dragon to investigate the matter immediately. Azure Dragon reported back to him after a few seconds, Morris Atkinson. Swore to protect Levi Group with his life. But the Garrison family set him up. And forced him to jump off a building. The media falsified the news of Morris. Atkinson's embezzlement of company funds to engage in secret affairs. News reported him to have committed suicide out of fear of facing punishment. The Garrison family. Levi punched a hole through the wall in anger. I've misunderstood you, my brother. Levi muttered to himself guiltily. Zoe sensed Levi's abnormal demeanor when he arrived home that night. She asked. What happened to you? Do you know about Morris' death? Zoe was stunned. I thought you knew all along. Levi elaborated. I was only made aware of it earlier tonight. Please do not act impulsively. Just let go of the past. Zoe was afraid Levi. Would seek revenge against the Garrison family. He was my best friend. He's dead because of me. How can you expect me. To let go of this so easily. I will never forgive the Garrison family. Levi said menacingly. Zoe consoled him right away. You need to calm down. Our business is still developing. We do not have the power to confront the Garrison family at the moment. Levi responded in an tone. The one month period I gave them will be up in another week. I will have them pay the price for what they did to Morris at his grave by that time. The Protector Chapter 65 The next day, Azure Dragon accompanied Levi to Morris Atkinson's grave. Morris was not buried in a proper cemetery because of the Garrison family's interference. He was simply buried in a secluded spot in the wild. Weeds had since covered his long unattended grave. Perhaps this grave will no longer be distinguishable after a few more years. I I'm here to see you, my brother. Levi said loudly. You were my first comrade in arms to weather the battlefield like business world. No one will ever comprehend the bond we shared. Levi cleared the weeds on Morris' grave with his own hands and fixed his gravestone. Levi took a limited edition bottle of wine available only in the army and sat in front of his grave. Let's share this quality wine today my brother. Levi gulped the content. After he spoke. Azure Dragon, inform everyone in the Garrison family to pay the price for 
their terrible deeds here after six days. Levi commanded. Understood, sir. Azure Dragon nodded. Kiran, ask Nuv to bring a few men here to fix up this grave. I cannot allow my brother's grave to be in such a shabby condition. Levi told Kiran. Then he continued to drink the bottle of wine while taking a stroll down. Memory Lane. I made a promise to Morris that I would provide him with the most luxurious Rolls Royce during his wedding. Levi stayed at Morris' grave for almost an entire day. Let's go and visit Morris' parents. Levi straightened himself. I've located his parents, sir. They are staying in a village not far away from the city. Azure Dragon reported. Levi grew maced. What? Morris' parents worked as governmental staff in the past. They own a house in the city. So why are they staying in a village now? Azure Dragon hesitated briefly before he continued. The Garrison family is behind this. They revoked his parents' ownership of the house and their pension. So they had no other choice but to move to the village and are now barely surviving. Levi's expression darkened. The Garrison family drove Morris' parents to the brink of desperation. They would have been dead if not for their old age. I must destroy that wretched family. Let's go. I want to visit them. I think of them as my own parents now. Anyone who dares to lay a finger on them will face certain death. Azure. Dragon and Kieran trembled fearfully as they listened to Levi's unforgiving words. It's been a very long time since he was so mad. I remember the last time was when he single-handedly faced the strongest battalion from those 18 countries. Nuv led a group of men to the spot and refurbished the grave shortly after. The trio left. Trey and all the other mafia bosses from different gangs followed Nuv. They brought no lesser than 300 men with them. After all, it is our obligation to fulfill the task Mr. Levi gave us. The village was not far away from Northampton but was significantly more rural compared to the city. The people staying in that lawless area all came from complicated backgrounds. Homeless people and provocatively dressed women filled the dirty alleyways. Levi felt a heart-wrenching pain as he took in the surroundings. How can Morris' parents live in such a place? He finally found Morris' parents' abode in a small building with a total of 30 square meters located deep in an alleyway. Cough up the money now, you old fools. You're the only family left who haven't paid the fee. Levi and the others heard the commotion from afar. They realized what was happening after they entered the courtyard. A few thugs with blonde hair were collecting protection fees from Morris. Parents. The two of them had visibly aged from when Levi last saw them six years ago. It was obvious they had suffered greatly. Please give us a little more time. We will receive our subsistence allowance. Soon. I will make sure to pay you first by that time. Morris' father, Rowan. Atkinson, was begging for mercy. Damn you. You told me the same thing last time. The leader of the gang raised his hand to slap Mr. Atkinson. The Protector Chapter 66 His hand was stopped in midair as Levi caught his wrist firmly. Who the hell are you? Let go of me right away. The leader of the gang threatened. Bam! Levi punched his face forcefully. His head snapped back and blood spurted. Everywhere. The thug yelped in pain. Kieran and Azure Dragon handled the rest of the thugs. All of them scrambled away from the scene on all fours. The leader of the gang yelled before he fled. Damn you, old man. How dare. You call for backup. I will summon Tiger here. Just you wait. They then left instantly. Mr. Atkinson and his wife closed their eyes hopelessly. Tiger was the boss in charge of the village. He had no lesser than fifty thugs working for him. 
and he had the guts to do as he pleased around the area. Tiger and his subordinates maintained a living by collecting protection fees. From the villagers. Anyone who did not submit the fees or was late to hand in. The money would get beaten up or even crippled at times. Tiger was a cruel man who had his share of living behind bars. His name. Would invoke fear in all of the villagers. Thank you, young man. You should leave while you can. Rowan said. Uncle, aunt, it's me. Levi Garrison. Levi introduced himself passionately. Levi? Is it really you? This is great. It's so good to see you after so long. Rowan and his wife were on the verge of tears. Our dearest son, our only hope in this world, is gone. Seeing Levi now reminds us of Morris. Oh, Morris. Uncle, aunt, please do not worry from now on. I will take care of you for the rest of your life in Morris' stead. No one will ever dare to lay a finger on both of you. Anger surged within Levi when he noticed the bruises on the old couple's necks. Bastards. They did not show any mercy to these elderlies. Rowan glanced at the ground floor and said in a hurry. Levi, you should. Leave immediately. They must have informed Tiger. He will be here soon. He's right. Your lives will be in danger once Tiger is here. That man is. Ruthless. You might even get crippled by him. Leave now while you can, my. Child. Morris' mother nudged Levi for him to run away. Uncle, aunt, what will the both of you do if I leave? Levi asked. Do not worry about us. We will at most suffer a beating. Moreover, our lives aren't valuable anymore. You should survive and return to clear Morris' name. Avenge him. Rowan was tear-stricken as he talked. Levi comforted them. Fred not. I am now strong enough to protect the both of you and avenge Morris at the same time. That's not going to work. You've never seen Tiger in action. He even has the courage to murder someone. I see. This Tiger has instilled fear in everyone's mind upon hearing his name. Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson are trembling at the mention of Tiger. That means he must have bullied them frequently. Levi thought to himself. Please leave now. We do not want to trouble you with this matter. Morris. Mother was anxious. She urged them to leave while glancing at the ground. Floor from time to time. Uncle, aunt. Please calm down. Nothing will happen now that I'm here. I. Want to meet this tiger in person as well. Levi turned to look at Kieran. Ask. Nuv and his men to come here. Kieran nodded. Yes, sir. Go. Go now. It's dangerous for you to stay. No, wait. It's too late now. They're already here. Rowan said frightfully. Over ten men, wielding batons and all kinds of weapons, entered their vision. The scary man leading the group was wearing a singlet. The tattoo of a tiger was clearly visible on his torso. Who the hell punched my brother? Show yourself this instance. The Protector Chapter 67 Tiger roared at the top of his lungs some distance away. The other residents hurriedly shut their windows in fear. They wanted nothing to do with the mess. The two elderly grasped Levi's arms as they heard Tiger's voice. Levi patted them. There's nothing to be afraid of. Tiger and his men reached the staircase swiftly, where Kieran and Azure Dragon were standing guard. Tiger's face turned sour when he saw Kieran and Azure Dragon's imposing manner. He sensed danger from the menacing aura exuding from their bodies. Who hit my brother? He asked. Tiger was furious because no one had ever dared to defy him in the village. He had always gotten his way each and every time. So it was an unprecedented scenario for his subordinate to be hit by another person. 
That's the reason why he came to seek revenge in person. Levi said with a smile. It was me. Aren't you the daredevil? Are you Rowan's relative? How dare you call for help to beat up my subordinate, Rowan Atkinson? I will torture you and your wife to my heart's content. Tiger threatened the old couple blatantly in front of Levi. Rowan and his wife were scared out of their wits. They begged for mercy. Right away. Please forgive my nephew, Mr. Tiger. I beg of you. I promise. There will be no next time. I can forgive him if you pay me 500,000 for the medical fee. I will call it even if each of them breaks one of their arms. Tiger sneered. What? 500,000? The couple of elderlies were dumbstruck. With terror. You can't do that. They are still young. So please don't break. Their arms. Please break our arms instead. Tears streamed down Rowan's cheeks as he begged Tiger. That's not going to work. Your arms are not as worthy as theirs. Hey. Are they? Three of you deaf? Don't force me to break your arms myself. Tiger's lips curled upward maliciously. Vroom. 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 The sound of tires screeching reverberated in the alleyway as multiple cars closed in on the area. The sound attracted Tiger and his men's attention. They turned around to look at the source of the noise. More than ten vans skidded to a stop. Countless men rushed out from the vans and dashed into the courtyard. Click. 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 The men assembled themselves around the narrow space and surrounded. Tiger and his subordinates. The newcomers glared at the thugs with a baton. In each of their hands. Mr. Mr. Tiger. I've counted their numbers. They have around 200. People here, not counting the other 100 standing outside. A thug. Reported shakily. What, 300 people? Tiger and the other thugs were astounded. They scanned the surroundings and discovered a problem. Every one of these men is huge and muscular. I can tell that they are skilled fighters. Because of the sinister aura they are giving off. These people are on a completely different level compared to us. Each of them can defeat five of us. Effortlessly. What's going on here? Tiger was trembling in fear as well. At that moment, a smaller group of people appeared. Nuv walked in front. With three other mafia bosses following closely behind him. Lord Nuv? And that's Trey and two other mafia bosses from North. Hampton. Tiger recognized the powerful men because he was an experienced thug. I am at most qualified to be Trey's subordinate, while Nuv is certainly a figure far beyond my reach. What brings you here, Lord Nuv? Tiger greeted him politely with a bow. But Nuv completely disregarded Tiger. He walked towards the staircase. And addressed Levi courteously. Please give us your orders, Mr. Levi. The Protector Chapter 68 What? Tiger and his men were caught in disbelief as they witnessed the scene unfolded in front of their eyes. Lord Nuv is so polite towards him. Who is that young man? Everyone was dumbfounded including the Atkinsons. They stared at Levi. Incredulously. I can tell these people are far more capable than Tiger based. On his reaction. But even they had to pay respect to Levi. Levi merely waved his hand. They bullied my godfather and godmother. I'll. Let you handle the rest. He led the old couple into the house after he spoke. Nuv turned around slowly and smiled at Tiger and his men ominously after. He received the instruction. Beat them up. Show no mercy. Tiger and his subordinates almost passed out from hearing Nuv's words. Rush them. Tiger and his gang members were helpless facing the crowd. The fighters. Barely warmed up themselves, 
but Tiger's party was already lying on the ground. Nuv's men hit their opponents with batons mercilessly. Tiger received the worst beating. Soon, he was lying in a pool of blood as his body twitched continuously. His men received a similar fate. Levi could not care less about the things happening outside the house. Because he had faith in Nuv's competency in dealing with the men and cleaning up the mess. I am quite sure I will not see a drop of blood on the floor by the time I walk through the door. You are so impressive, Levi. Rowan looked at Levi in amazement. Levi smiled. Be rest assured, uncle. I have the capabilities now. I will make the entire garrison family kneel before Morris Grave six days later to pay the price for their terrible deeds. Hey! Rowan thought the idea was unthinkable. But he felt a tiny bit of hope. After what happened earlier. Uncle, aunt, I hope I can have the honor of referring the both of you as my godparents from now on. We will move out of this place tonight. Levi brought the Atkinsons away shortly after. The courtyard was spotless as Levi expected. Moreover, there wasn't a single trace of the crowd left behind in the courtyard. Levi arranged for Rowan and his wife to stay in a five-star hotel that night. He planned to purchase a new villa for them the next day. Meanwhile, the Garrison family received Levi's invitation. Brian Garrison said mockingly, Levi has the guts to summon all of us to kneel before Morris Atkinson's grave. He must be dreaming. Joseph responded nonchalantly. Levi does not have a clue about the Garrison family's influence, after all. Haha, <laughs> I can't wait to see the desperate expression on Levi's face six days. Later. Ben and Jacob laughed out loud. Rick was a meticulous man so he couldn't help but asked. Brian, are you absolutely sure Nuv is the man who is supporting Levi? Brian reassured him. I am certain about that, uncle. Nuv went to clean up. Morris Atkinson's grave today and even visited his parents' house in the village. I also heard Nuv beat up the gang leader, Tiger, who's in charge of that area. So I'm sure Nuv is the person. There's no mistake about this. Rick nodded. That's a weight off my chest in that case. But we should. Proceed with caution nonetheless. Don't worry, Rick. I've contacted Jack Smith earlier. He promised to come in. Person and bring along all his men to support us. Joseph put on a wicked. Smile. Levi Garrison. We had our ways of ruining your life six years ago. Now. We will force you to realize how easily we can muck up your life again. The Protector Chapter 69 The next day. Levi contacted Chloe, but all he could hear was her mumbling through the speaker as if she was occupied. Tell me your location. I'll come find you. Levi said impatiently. I'm at Northampton City Center's Sue's Western Cuisine Restaurant. Chloe informed Levi of her whereabouts. Levi drove his car towards the aforementioned restaurant immediately. Meanwhile, in Sue's Western Cuisine Restaurant, Chloe sat at a table awkwardly. A middle-aged couple sat beside her. They were her parents, Theodore Macy and Susie Shorts. A young man and another middle-aged couple sat opposite them. Chloe's parents had forced her to attend a blind date. She was closing in on her thirties, after all. So it was understandable why her parents are starting to get anxious. The young man seated opposite her was Vernon Tate. He has a net worth of over ten million, and owned five properties across North Hampton. Vernon Tate was determined to get what he wanted for the blind date today. Although Chloe was an excellent woman, Vernon was certain that he was still better than her. His parents shared the same sentiment, which explained their relatively arrogant attitude during the meeting. Theodore Macy and Susie Shorts were satisfied with Vernon Tate as their potential son-in-law. 
If you do not have any objection, Theodore, let's allow the young ones to get together. Vernon's father, Larry Tate, said. Ah! That's great! Vernon is an outstanding young man. He's the right man. For our daughter. Chloe's parents were delighted. Chloe knew Vernon was a good fit for her in every aspect. But the thought of someone flashed across her mind all of a sudden. She immediately rejected the idea. No way. I think we still need more time to understand one another. What? How much further do you need to understand one another? You're sufficiently familiar with each other by now. Chloe's rejection did not amuse. Larry and Vernon Tate. This is moving too fast. We've only known each other for less than a month. Chloe steeled her resolution. Vernon looked at Chloe surprisingly. We can always get to know each other. Better after we start dating. Moreover, I think we are already familiar with one another. We are not getting younger, after all. I believe our relationship is heading towards marriage. Theodore, Larry and their wives nodded in agreement. He's right. At that moment, a figure arrived at the scene. The man was none other than Levi Garrison. He grabbed Chloe's arm and ordered assertively. Follow me. I need to talk to you about something. Everyone was dumbfounded, including Chloe. She did not expect Levi to be in such a rush to the extent of grabbing her by force. Who are you? What are you doing? Let go of her. Larry Tate was the first to regain his senses. Theodore and Susie eyed Levi curiously. Who is he, Chloe? He looks a little familiar. Chloe answered helplessly. He's Levi Garrison. Chloe's parents were taken aback. What? Levi Garrison? No wonder he looks familiar. What is he doing here? Why are you still keeping contact with him? We, we used to be in the same class. It's only natural we kept in touch. Chloe explained. Larry Tate questioned immediately. What is the meaning of this, Theodore? Did you arrange for Chloe to undergo two blind dates at the same time? Levi finally grasped the situation. Theodore quickly clarified. That's not it. He's her ex-classmate. Moreover. He's nothing compared to Vernon. Levi is just a poor loser who's fresh out of. Prison. He doesn't even have a job. Larry Tate's expression softened significantly upon hearing that. They could. Not help the exaggerated reaction because they sensed the odd emotions. Glinted in Chloe's eyes upon Levi's arrival. The Protector Chapter 70 Vernon Tate breathed a sigh of relief. He sized up Levi mockingly. So, your friend is jobless, Chloe? I do have a security guard position available in my company. I'll offer him six thousand a month because he's your friend. His physique is perfect for the job. What do you say? Levi ignored him. He apologized to Chloe. I'm sorry to have interrupted your blind date. Chloe shook her head. That's all right. Did something happen? I am buying a house for an uncle and aunt of mine. So I came to you. Levi said. Oh. I see. I didn't know you have an uncle and aunt looking for a house. He <laughs> he. Vernon and Larry sneered. A house? I guess Levi can at most afford the tiniest apartment in this city. Any place over two million will be impossible in his case. From Theodore and Susie's perspective, they thought Levi was looking for Chloe because he wanted a special offer. Chloe is a manager, so she has the authority to give out special discounts. There has been plenty of people looking for her to buy a house in the last few years because of this reason. Alone. 
those people can save up to a few hundred thousand at times. Because of Chloe. Levi must be here for the special offer. I understand now. You're not satisfied with just Bayview Garden, I suppose. Chloe was an experienced sales agent. She figured out Levi's intention after. Listening to him. He's looking for a villa. Otherwise, he could have directly. Purchased a house at the Bayview Garden Real Estate Agency. Yes. Levi nodded. I do have a few properties that might interest you. I'll bring you to our company now. Chloe then turned to look at the people seated around the table. Uncle Larry, Aunt, I'll be back soon. I have to handle this matter now. Larry got up from his seat and suggested with a smile. Why don't we accompany you? We can take a look at your workplace as well. What do you say? Let us join you, Chloe. Vernon sounded excited. Then he glanced at Levi. Tauntingly. Chloe did not agree to their request immediately. Instead, she turned to look. At Levi as a gesture to seek his opinion. Levi nodded. Sure. Let's go together. All right. We'll go together then. Vernon paid for the bill before exiting the restaurant. He said nonchalantly with the receipt in his hand. A meal for six people that costs less than five thousand. This is cheap. Theodore added cheerfully. You must have luxurious meals even on normal days to consider this as a cheap meal, Vernon. Vernon glanced at Levi before he replied. Indeed. I spend at least two thousand for every meal because of my work. Chloe's parents could not be fonder of Vernon. Chloe said to Levi when they arrived at the underground parking lot. I'll fetch you there. Okay. No problem. You are more familiar with the destination anyway. In the end, Chloe fetched her parents and Levi, while Vernon brought his parents as they headed towards their destination. They were almost at the suburbs after driving continuously for over an hour. Vernon and his father scoffed. We're almost at the suburbs now. I'm afraid. He's going to buy a house in the village. Vernon's mother added. He should consider himself lucky to be able to afford a house. But half an hour later, Chloe's car came to a halt in front of a villa area. Why are we here, Chloe? I thought your friend is going to buy a house. Vernon asked curiously after getting out of his car. Chloe looked at him in astonishment. We are here to buy a villa. Silence filled the air following Chloe's explanation. The Protector Chapter 71 Everyone was astounded as they looked at Levi and Chloe in disbelief. 6. Villa Vernon asked with a shaky voice. That's right. If we are talking about a normal house or flat, Bayview Garden will have served the purpose. Chloe said. Larry Tate and his son were flabbergasted. Our family can barely afford a house in Bayview Garden, not to mention the villas owned by Bayview Garden Real Estate. These villas cost at least 30 million to over a hundred million. Can Levi Garrison really afford a villa? We don't believe this. Even Theodore Macy and his wife were doubtful. We are relatively familiar. With Levi Garrison's current condition, he certainly can't afford a villa. He's no longer the billionaire he was six years ago. Just as they were pondering about Levi's current situation, a group of people rushed out from the villa area. Chloe's parents recognized the man leading the group of people. He was Bayview Garden Real Estate's boss, Jim Spencer, as well as Chloe's superior. They met with him once during the annual general meeting. Jim Spencer walked forward hastily in Levi's direction and greeted him. Excitedly. It's an honor to meet you, Mr. Garrison. You could have informed me. Before your arrival. It is my duty to welcome you in person. Welcome, Mr. Garrison. All the staff working under Bayview Garden Real. 
estate lined up in two neat rows to welcome Levi. They even prepared a red carpet and flower petals to celebrate his advent. Vernon, Larry and the others were stupefied. What's with this grandiose formation? Theodore and Susie on the other hand started to see Levi in a different light. Levi said casually. There's no need to go through all the trouble. I'm only here to purchase a villa. Levi's words took Larry and his family by surprise. Theodore questioned his daughter to confirm the thought in his mind. Did he buy a house from you previously? Yes. He bought the most expensive unit in Bayview Garden and paid the 50 million in cash. He's now the VVIP of Bayview Garden Real Estate. Chloe explained. Her parents nearly passed out from the shock. This is crazy. He paid 50 million in cash? Please follow me, Mr. Garrison. Jim led Levi into the sales center in person. The sales center was embellished with champagne and decorations in preparation to celebrate Levi's purchase. May I know what kind of villa are you looking for, Mr. Garrison? Jim asked. The most expensive one. Levi answered without any hesitation. I will make it up to Morris by treating his parents well from now on. Buying them the most expensive villa is the least I can do. Levi's nonchalant request frightened the Tate family members. Even if we combine all of our assets, they are not worth even a hundred million, yet Levi is here casually acquiring a villa worth more than our family's net worth. Their faces reddened in embarrassment when they thought of the insults they threw in Levi's face earlier. Perhaps we are just some clowns in his eyes. Making a fool out of ourselves. Please follow me, Mr. Garrison. This is the most expensive villa we have. They price is 120 million, but we will provide you with a 20 million discount. The size of this villa is, Jim began to explain the details of the villa. Okay. That's good. I want to move in tonight. Can you handle the rest for me? Levi asked. Absolutely. We will also provide you with three housekeepers, a butler, a van, and a chauffeur. Jim offered. In the end, Levi paid for the hundred million villa in full amount using his card. While everyone stared at him. Then Levi pointed at Chloe and said, she's my agent. The commission belongs to her. Please be rest assured, Mr. Garrison. I understand what you mean. Jim smiled. The Protector Chapter 72 Chloe did not know how she should respond to the turn of events. I can receive at least a 50 million commission from this sale alone. But I did. Practically nothing. Chloe's parents now realized Vernon's success was actually nothing to be amazed by. Their family's wealth was insignificant either. Larry, let's discuss. Our children's matter another day. Theodore said mercilessly. Hey? But, Larry and his family were left rooted to their spot. Dumbfoundedly while Chloe and her family left swiftly. Levi brought the Atkinsons to the new villa in the night. Please stay here. From now on. I will take good care of you in Morris' stead. Levi finally felt at ease after he was done arranging his godparents. Accommodation. Meanwhile, the Garrison family was keeping track of Levi's movements as usual. Brian Garrison sneered. Levi bought a house for Morris' parents and even vowed to avenge Morris' death. Humph. He's just a piece of trash. I doubt he will ever find out the truth. Behind Morris's death, much less carrying out any revenge. Victoria. Responded disdainfully. Is the Lopez family aware of this matter? Brian, I want you to inform them. Immediately. I want them to be present as well five days later. I want the. Lopez family to see with their own eyes as I torment Levi. I can finally avenge. 
Ashton after so long. Jacob spoke coldly. Brian Garrison's arrival at the Lopez family scared Harry and the others. Members of the Lopez family were fearful after they were made aware of the gathering at the cemetery. Brian threatened them. I will wipe out the entire Lopez family if I do not see all of you there five days later. Please be rest assured, Mr. Garrison. We will definitely be there. Harry. Lopez's legs wobbled. It was only until Brian left that Harry unleashed his anger. Levi is really a curse. Why must he go and offend the Garrison family? Now he's invited. Trouble for our family too. I'm going to kill him. Let's go to Aaron's house. Now. Harry brought everyone to Aaron's place. He asked Aaron to summon Zoe. And Levi as well. Levi and Zoe saw a lot of cars parked outside the house when they arrived. They were startled to see the crowd inside the house. Every member of the Lopez family was there. You're a bastard, Levi. You're the cause of the Lopez family's demise. Aaron. Rebuked Levi the moment he walked through the door. Everyone else started. Hurling abuse at him too. Zoe shifted her gaze onto Levi incredulously after she knew about the whole story. She sniffled. I told you not to provoke the Garrison family. Why did you not listen to me? I know you want to avenge Morris, but have you ever thought about us? Have you ever thought about me? I, Levi was interrupted the moment he started to speak. No. You never thought about anything from my perspective. You always do. As you please. Now you've completely offended the Garrison family and involved my family in this mess. The Lopez family will cease to exist in North Hampton if the Garrison family is dissatisfied with us. Our lives are all in danger now. Do you want to drive me to my death before you are contented? Zoe was tear-stricken. Levi did not explain. They will not listen to anything I say anyway. What should we do now? Aaron panicked. There's only one way to resolve this, Harry voiced out. Zoe must. Divorce him. Cutting all ties with Levi Garrison is the only way to secure. Ourselves now. The Protector Chapter 73 Samuel and Sean agreed to the proposal. That's right. They must get a divorce. This is the only method to protect our family now. Although Aaron and his wife were mistreated by the Lopez family all along, they took their side in that argument. Aaron said coldly, deal with your own mess. Do not trouble us. We agree for the both of you to get a divorce as well. Caitlin nodded in agreement. That's right. I thought we would be able to live peacefully. But you had to stir up this mess. You no longer have the right to stay in the Lopez family. Everyone firmly requested for Zoe to divorce Levi. They did not want him to stay a second longer in the family. Levi could not care less about the outsider's opinion. He only wanted to know Zoe's stance. Levi looked at Zoe and asked her, What do you think? I will respect your decision. Levi would not oppose Zoe's wish if she desired to divorce him. To be honest, you've disappointed me greatly. You gave up a peaceful life to deliberately provoke the Garrison family. This is no longer a problem. Revolving around yourself because the Lopez family is now involved as well. The Garrison family can crush our family effortlessly if they wish to. Zoe expressed her thought harshly. Harry and the others were satisfied with what Zoe had said. Zoe will divorce Levi if she's blaming him now. In this way, our family will escape this predicament unscathed. Can you please take into consideration others' points of view before you do anything in the future? To prevent dragging my family into this mess, I have decided. Levi shut his eyes as he awaited Zoe's judgment. It seems like she wants a 
divorce, after all. I will leave the Lopez family and sever all my ties with all of you. I choose to stay by my husband's side and weather through every hardship together. Zoe took a step forward and stood next to Levi. Levi fell into a daze as he processed Zoe's words in his mind. He was overjoyed. She is indeed my wife. Everyone else inside the house was bewildered by Zoe's announcement. Aaron and Caitlin shouted simultaneously. What do you think you're doing? Zoe Lopez? You must get a divorce. Divorce him. Zoe shook her head. No. I will not get a divorce. Why would I wait for him? For six years if I wanted a divorce? Grandpa, if you desire to cut off all ties. With Levi, then please banish me from the family. This. Harry was reluctant to make the final call because Zoe was her. Granddaughter at the end of the day. Moreover, she was handling a large. Project with high returns at that moment. Hurry up and make the official statement, Grandpa. We can safeguard the Lopez family by sacrificing her alone. Samuel urged. Other members of the family convinced Harry as well. Aaron and Caitlin had no other choice but to stand aside and watch on. Helplessly. Levi's voice was heard just as Harry was about to speak. Do you believe in me? I will settle this matter without causing any trouble to the Lopez family. But I will only do so if you promise not to banish Zoe from the family. No one will believe you. Where did you find the confidence to utter those words? Even Zoe is disappointed in you, not to mention us. Levi's statement triggered a wave of dissatisfaction to erupt among the members of the Lopez family. At that moment, Zoe was doubtful as well. So she did not expect anyone else to have faith in Levi. Harry Lopez glanced at Levi and Zoe in an unforgiving manner before he announced. I have decided to banish Zoe Lopez from the Lopez family. From now on, she will have no relationship whatsoever with the Lopez family. I will clarify this situation with the Garrison family and make a public declaration as well. We are no longer related to the both of you from now on. You will have to settle your own mess. The Protector Chapter 74 Aaron and Caitlin looked at Levi disappointingly. They insulted him angrily. You're just a piece of useless trash. You are not even capable of protecting your own wife. How can you stay indifferent after your wife is banished from her family? How can you call yourself a man? Levi merely held Zoe's hand and left. He glanced at everyone else before exiting the house. All of you will regret the decision you've made today. Humph. Regret? Impossible. Everyone sneered. The news of Zoe's banishment was quickly spread all over Northampton. Everyone knew Zoe because of Levi, so the news became a sensation in no time. Brian Garrison laughed out loud after hearing the news from Harry Lopez. Himself. Haha. <laughs> this is great. Even the Lopez family cut ties with him. Levi is. Truly all alone now. Humph. Just you wait, Levi. Nuv will ditch you too. I'll see what you can do. By that time. Go to hell, Levi. Coincidentally, we can bury you next to your best friend in. That cemetery. Everyone in the Garrison family was pleased. In their opinion, Levi would be. Doomed after a few days. Levi said with a smile after they arrived home. You do believe in me, Zoe. No. I don't. I don't think you have the capabilities to settle this matter. But I. Promise to stay by your side for the rest of our lives during the birthday. Banquet the other night. So I will tough through everything with you. Zoe. Explain solemnly. Levi grinned. I am getting more excited now that the time limit I gave the Garrison family is coming to an end. That night, Azure Dragon suddenly messaged Levi, 
I've found out the truth. Behind Morris Atkinson's death. Someone filmed the entire process before he died. Levi straightened himself in a jerk when he saw the message. His sudden movements startled Zoe. I'm heading out for a while. Levi left in a hurry. Azure Dragon was waiting for him in an SUV when Levi reached the Bayview Garden neighborhood's entrance. Azure Dragon began explaining after Levi got into the car. Sir, Mr. Morris. Managed the company well after your imprisonment six years ago. He made the appropriate arrangements to prevent the Garrison family from taking over Levi Group. Levi knew well of Morris' abilities. He's a business prodigy. He was adept at manipulating the rules and regulations to his advantage. The Garrison family wanted to get rid of Mr. Morris because he interfered with their plans. So they laid a series of traps for him and faked evidence to frame him. Embezzlement was one of their tricks. Mr. Morris' bank account was top up with one billion a day before your wedding. A few houses were suddenly registered under his name as well, with women living in those houses. Those women were the mistresses reported by the news. They faked plenty of evidence to falsify crimes against Mr. Morris. The Garrison family even included charges of corruption against Mr. Rowan. Levi finally understood that the Garrison family had been planning the scheme for a long time after listening to Azure Dragon's detailed report. They wanted to eliminate me, as well as my most loyal subordinates. I've already sent people to look for the four mistresses I mentioned. They are in transit as we speak. Azure Dragon added. Levi met with his eyes. Then where are we going now? We are going to Queen Private Investigator Agency. This agency has been active for years. They are skilled in digging dark secrets from the past. They possess a lot of dirty secrets of wealthy people and celebrities in North Hampton. Coincidentally, someone from the agency filmed Mr. Morris' death. Scene. Azure Dragon elaborated. Okay. Let's go and have a look at the evidence at Queen Private Investigator. Agency. The Protector Chapter 75. I know the Garrison family orchestrated Morris' death. But I want to know. Every single detail. The process of how they drove him to jump off the building, everyone involved in the process, as well as every turn of events. I must be informed clearly of all these elements. Queen Private Investigator Agency was unexpectedly located in a luxurious manner. Levi would not have believed that place to be a private investigator agency if he wasn't made aware of it in the first place. Once they reached the entrance, the security guards requested them to get out of the car and undergo a thorough security check before they could enter the manor. Azure Dragon whispered. Sir, I did not reveal our identities. Levi nodded. Okay. Levi seized the opportunity to size up his surroundings. This alloy door is custom made. I think it's bulletproof. These guards are clearly seasoned men. They are unusually calm and collected. I can even sense their menacing. Aura. Perhaps they are veterans from the battlefield. The guards searched their bodies while wearing a pair of white gloves. They allowed Levi and Azure Dragon to enter only after an exhaustive search. A designated guide led them through a special tunnel after they entered the manor. Both of them arrived at a meeting room after some time. A middle-aged man with neatly combed hair sat on a leather sofa. He held a glass of red wine in his left hand and a cigar in his right. Behind him stood six men clad in suits. Their demeanor and presence revealed their competency in combat. Nuve's men were incomparable to these professional bodyguards. Moreover, they were evidently mercenaries. Judging from their varied skin complexion. Sir, he is the boss of Queen Private Investigator Agency, Francis Hicks, also. 
known as Mr. Secrets. A lot of wealthy people and celebrities fear him they. Most. Azure Dragon explained. Francis puffed on his cigar. Levi Garrison? You're finally released from prison. It is quite a feat for you to be acquainted with Nuve. Levi and Azure Dragon merely stared at him. I guess he is not just an average Joe to be able to obtain that information. But of course, I revealed that piece of information myself. My database is highly confidential and classified. There is only one person in Arudaya who has the right to access my database. Levi smiled. I assume you are aware of my intention here. Of course. You want the video of Morris Atkinson's death. Francis returned. The smile. What is your condition then? Levi asked. Wonderful. I like dealing with straightforward people like you. Francis. Placed down his wine glass and raised his hand. Five hundred million, and. The video is yours. Azure Dragon gasped. It seems to me this Mr. Secrets is a greedy man. Five hundred million? That's a little expensive. Levi replied nonchalantly. Ah, you should know that I risked my precious life to take that video. We are. Talking about the powerful Garrison family, after all. They can easily. Annihilate me at any time. This video affects too many parties, aside from. The Garrison family. A lot of influential forces will be hunting me if I hand this video to you. So 500 million is a fair amount. Francis complained. What he did not know was that he had revealed a piece of information. Unwittingly. There are other parties involved in Morris' death aside from the Garrison family. Levi leaned closer while maintaining eye contact with Francis. Aren't you afraid I will seek revenge against you? Tap, tap, tap. The bodyguards behind Francis moved in at once as they glared at Levi. I can cripple Levi Garrison with a single command if I want. Francis puffed on. His cigar again and sneered. I know Nuve's power is almost comparable to Jack Jr., but he is just a mere thug at the end of the day. I do not take him. Seriously much less you. Francis was a confident man. He could not care less about Nuve. The Protector Chapter 76 Haha. <laughs> you are absolutely right. Nuve is nothing compared to you. Levi said. Honestly. Francis Hicks's imposing manner alone is superior to Nuve's. Levi sat on the sofa and poured himself a glass of wine as well. He took a sip and said, I can tell you firmly, Mr. Secrets. Five hundred million is not possible. But we can negotiate the price. Francis glanced at Levi. I am a decisive person. Offer me a price then. Levi did not say a word. He raised his hand as well. Francis was unsettled by that sight. Are you kidding me? Fifty million? That's not possible. I can consider if you offer me four hundred million. Levi grinned. You're mistaken, Mr. Secrets. It's not fifty million. Francis stood up angrily. Five million? You're outrageous, Levi Garrison. Let me be frank. I do not care about Nuve. You will face the consequences if you infuriate me. Levi patted Francis's shoulder. Calm down, Mr. Secrets. I am a sensible person. So how would I offer you five million? Francis's expression softened visibly. He assumed Levi was making a joke. Earlier. But Levi's subsequent clarification shocked him to his core. I'm offering you five. The atmosphere inside the meeting room reached its boiling point afterward. Bam! Francis slammed the table and yelled at Levi furiously. Are you effing? Kidding me? I'll kill you. Crack crack crack. 
the six bodyguards behind Francis Hicks drew their bayonets in just a split. Second. Tap tap tap. At the same time, the door to the meeting room swung open. Over a thirty. Men rushed into the room. A total of forty men surrounded Levi and Azure. Dragon, leaving them with no room to escape. Every one of these bodyguards is highly skilled and proficient in combat. Francis looked at Levi mockingly. Have you never heard of me from Nuve? No one in the entire Northampton has the guts to lay a finger on me. Even. The most powerful mafia boss, Jack Smith, has to pay respect to me. So how? Dare a nobody like you dares to make fun of me? You must be tired of living. Francis was burning with rage. Levi was unfazed. I am not making fun of you. I am sincere in doing business. With you. Five is more than enough to pay for the video. Francis Hicks and his bodyguards were engulfed by wrath after listening to Levi's words. He wants to buy the invaluable video with only five? Is he dreaming? Francis asked Levi. Are you serious? I've never been more serious my entire life. I'll pay you five for the video. Levi nodded. Then I should be serious as well. You can either buy that video from me for 500 million or let me chop off your arms. Make the decision. Yourself. Francis panted heavily in anger. However, both Levi and Azure Dragon burst with laughter after listening to his threat. Francis and his bodyguards were dumbfounded by their reaction. Do you really think you can leave this place unscathed? Francis put on a wicked smile. Do you know how I established my influence in this city? These bodyguards are the pillars of my success. Let me be honest with you. They are all mercenaries and veterans from the battlefield. All of them participated in wars and killed over ten people. Their combat abilities far exceed Nuve's men. No one dares to harm me because of them. Not even Jack Smith himself. The Protector Chapter 77 I've spent millions to nurture each of these bodyguards and spend over ten million on them every year. Francis roared in Levi's direction. Who are you? To compete with me? Do you think you can fight against me with Nuve's? Support? What a joke. Based on Azure Dragon's investigation, Francis Hicks is telling the truth. No. One in Northampton dares to lay a finger on him, despite being just an owner of a private investigator agency. His bodyguards do overpower they underworld forces in this city. Are you done blabbering? Levi asked casually. Get them. Francis commanded in rage. But at that moment, they saw Azure Dragon slowly removing his clothes. Beside Levi. Thunk. Everyone was stunned after Azure Dragon removed his singlet. What they saw was a staggering amount of horrible scars covering every inch of his skin. The bodyguards were war veterans. So they were aware of the cause of the scars. Most are bullet wounds. Some are scars left behind from flying. Shrapnel and the corroded areas of the skin are caused by chemical weapons. Even people who experienced the battlefield like them could not imagine a person sustaining so many injuries that left so many scars on their bodies. These wounds are only present on those godlike beings on war zones. They must have participated in thousands of wars to accumulate those scars. The bodyguards were certain that Azure Dragon was a soldier as well. A legendary soldier nonetheless. Francis was caught in perplexity when he noticed the terrified expressions on his bodyguards' faces. But he yelled at the same time. What are you doing? Are you afraid? You're frightened by the sight of a few scars? Take him down. And I will reward the person who did it with a million. Finally. One of the bodyguards rushed forward with his bayonet after the order was given. Bam! Azure Dragon kicked that bodyguard and sent him flying backward. He 
crashed against the wall and remained on the ground with his body. Twitching. Gang up on him. All of the bodyguards closed in on Azure Dragon simultaneously. Thump thump thump. Ugh. Wails of pain reverberated inside the room. A few moments later, only Azure. Dragon and Francis remained standing inside the meeting room while Levi sat unmoving on the couch. All forty bodyguards were lying on the ground, covered in their own blood. The scene was a grotesque sight to behold. Francis was petrified. He scanned his surroundings in utter disbelief. The King of War from the Five Great Wars Regiment of Arudaya, Azure. Dragon. And the God of War of Arudaya. The mercenaries lying on the ground finally recognized Levi and Azure. Dragon since they once crossed paths with each other on the battlefield. The God of War's legendary achievements was spread throughout all. War zones and battlefields for an extended period of time. The mercenaries worshipped Levi as their god whenever they go to war. Placing faith in the god of war provides us with hope. Now, the bodyguards were kneeling before Levi, worshipping him after. Recognizing him for who he was. God. God of war, the legendary god of. War. Mr. Secret's profession was to collect intelligence and exclusive information. So he knew about the God of War's arrival in Northampton. Francis was. Even in the know of many details compared to others. He grasped the situation immediately after listening to his bodyguards. They. Are the God of War and Azure Dragon in person. Can we discuss the price now? Levi swirled the wine in his glass around. Thump. Francis groveled at Levi's feet and begged for mercy frantically. It's my fault. For failing to recognize the almighty god of war. Please spare my life. I beg. You. Thump thump thump. Francis slammed his forehead against the floor continuously to express his. Sincerity. The Protector Chapter 78. Levi scoffed. What do I need your life for? I only need the video. I will give you the video, sir. I will give you anything you want. Francis was. Scared out of his wits. I'll pay you five as promised. Levi said. Azure Dragon took out the money from his pocket and tossed it in Francis's. Face. You don't have to pay me, sir, Francis forced a hideous smile. Just take it, Levi raised his tone. Francis kept the five in his pocket obediently and swiftly handed the USB. Containing the video to Levi. Play it. Francis hurriedly played the video on the screen after receiving the order. Soon, a footage was shown on the screen. The background was the rooftop of. Levi Group's building. A lot of people were there, and they were divided into three parties. Morris Atkinson was by himself. The other party was the Garrison family. Namely Brian, Victoria, Ashton, Lionel, and Tammy. While the last party consists of a few youngsters, including Philip Hardy, Kit Page, Misty Dennis, and Holly Nelson. Those youngsters were Morris' close friends. Holly Nelson was Morris' love. Interest as he had been pursuing her. In the past, Holly promised to become Morris' girlfriend officially after Levi's wedding. He was his groomsman while she was Zoe's bridesmaid. The rest of the video was easy to comprehend. The Garrison family threatened Morris to jump off the building. Otherwise, they would kill Holly and the others. They also mentioned about harming Mr. and Mrs. Atkinson's. Morris had no other choice but to fulfill their wish in order to protect his parents, lover, and friends. But Holly and the three other people smiled cheerfully after Morris leaped off the rooftop. I see. So they conspired with the Garrison family since the very beginning to force Morris to jump off the building. The Garrison family easily took control of Levi Group once Morris was gone. Levi grimaced after he finished the video. The temperature inside the room seemed to have dropped below. Freezing point. Francis could not help but shuddered. 
This man in front of me is too scary. His wrath will bring countless deaths. Let me explain to you, sir. Holly Nelson and the others joined forces with the Garrison family to set Mr. Morris up. After his death, Holly Nelson received benefits from the Garrison family. She is now the president of Star Entertainment. Mr. Morris' close friends received promotions as well. They now managed a company of their own, respectively. They are responsible for Mr. Morris' defamation and they are the ones that leaked the falsified information about him to the public. Francis offered. Crack Francis stared in horror as Levi crushed the wine glass in his hands as it shattered into pieces. All of them must die. The words slipped through. Levi's gritted teeth. Francis's legs wobbled. He fell onto the ground on his knees. Let's go. We are visiting Holly Nelson tomorrow. Levi ordered. Then he exited the place with Azure Dragon. Francis knelt on the floor for a long time even after the both of them had left. His body was drenched in cold sweat. I agreed to Jack Smith's request when he contacted me two days ago. He wanted me to tag along to Morris Atkinson's grave to intimidate Nuve and Levi Garrison. I will not accept that request now, even if I have a thousand lives to spare. Levi Garrison is the legendary god of war. Now I understand why the only piece of information I could obtain about Levi Garrison during his imprisonment was that he went to the same prison as Nuve. That's because he left the prison a long time ago. His profile is now classified and protected by the army. The Protector Chapter 79 Levi and Azure Dragon arrived at a manor afterward. It was the place Azure. Dragon and the others were staying in. The four women are all here, sir. Azure Dragon whispered. All right. Bring them in. Levi ordered. He scanned through the women's profile on the couch. These women are executives in large corporations nominally. But they are, in fact, professional mistresses. Their profession requires them to seduce influential and highly ranked figures and become their mistresses. Once they've successfully established that status, they will deliberately leave pieces of evidence to spread the news of their infidelity and indirectly ruin these influential figures' reputations. Morris' case is a perfect example. All of them tried to get close to him before his death. They purposefully allowed the paparazzi to capture photos of them together. After the fake news was released, the pictures of them entering hotels as a couple became solid evidence to back their identity as Morris mistresses. This is their job. Description, and they are usually paid handsomely after completing their tasks. The four women entered the room after a short while. Their appearance, demeanor, and temperament were completely different. From the girls in nightclubs, they gave off an aura of that of a woman with professional career. All of them eyed Levi arrogantly. Levi compared their faces according to their profiles in his hand. Nicole. Gina, Tasha, and Sasha. Who are you? Why did you bring us here? Nicole and the others glared at. Levi. Perhaps all of you can no longer recognize me. Let me introduce myself. I am Levi Garrison. What? Levi Garrison. All four women's faces fell when they heard that. Don't be nervous. I am only here to clarify something with you. What? Happened to my best friend, Morris Atkinson, six years ago. They were startled as Levi raised his tone on purpose. I will let all of you leave unharmed if you confess the truth. Levi stared at them. Nicole and the other girls exchanged glances before they responded. What? Everything about him was reported in the news, and that was the truth. He brought that on himself. What do we have to do with that matter? Let us go. Immediately. 
otherwise, you will face the repercussions. Levi smiled. But your professions are clearly stated here on your profile. See. You're slandering us. We did not do that. Morris Atkinson lied to us. Moreover, what's wrong with us staying with him if he's single? That useless. Piece of shit brought that on himself. We've got nothing to do with his. Death. That's right. Let us go now. Otherwise, you will receive a similar fate, Levi. Garrison. Nicole and the others threatened him. They were not afraid of Levi. Because they had someone supporting them. So, you're not confessing? Levi asked. We're not telling you anything. There's nothing to tell anyway. Nicole said. In a pompous manner. Tap. Levi did not speak further. He placed a gun and a few bullets on the tabletop. All the colors drained from all four women's faces simultaneously. Do bear in mind that I have limited patience. Levi stared at them coldly. Nicole crossed her arms in front of her chest and sneered. You're not scaring. Anyone now. What are you going to do? Kill us. We have a powerful figure. Backing us. Does he think we are some immature young girls? We know he's. Just trying to intimidate us. So there's no reason to be afraid at all. Levi kept quiet. He disassembled a bullet and poured the gunpowder on the tabletop. Then he lit the gunpowder with a match. Whoosh! Burning flame erupted as the heat washed over the women. Arg! They stepped backward startlingly because they were afraid of getting burned. The Protector Chapter 80 Azure Dragon grabbed Nicole's arm and brought her forcefully to where Levi was. Levi disassembled another bullet and poured the gunpowder on Nicole's face. Nicole was already struggling with all her might trying to free herself, but her effort was for naught. The other girls were trembling in fear because they sensed the dreadful atmosphere. Click. Levi lit another match and brought the flame close to Nicole's face. Levi's slightest mistake could cause a reaction between the fire and gun powder, leading to the disfigurement of Nicole's delicate face. No. Please don't. I'll speak. I'll tell you everything. Nicole yelled. Hysterically as she stared unblinkingly at the flame. Thump. Nicole slumped onto the floor after Azure Dragon loosened his grip. What about the rest of you? Levi looked at the other girls. Thump. They knelt before Levi one after the other. We'll tell you everything. Rick. Garrison came to us and orchestrated all these to happen. He registered the houses under Mr. Morris' name too. We are telling the truth. We even have evidence to back our words. They're all in our cell phones. All four of them were intelligent women. They knew they had to keep the evidence to protect themselves. All the pieces of evidence were sufficient to prove Rick Garrison was the mastermind behind the falsifications. Ah, I see. So it is him. I've always thought of him as the most righteous person in the Garrison family. He wears glasses, gives off a gentleman vibe. And even graduated from a prestigious university abroad. Moreover, Rick. Garrison was the only one who treated me well in the family previously. Perhaps he's the evilest and most cunning among all of them. Rick Garrison. Might be the family's strategist judging from this scheme he pulled off. He. Must have planned this for a long time to overthrow me six years ago. Ha ha ha. I see now. Let them go. Nicole and the others were frightened when they saw a few soldiers walking. Around on their way out. They began to feel curious about Levi's identity. I've finally understood everything related to Morris' death. Very well. I will. See for myself how carefree your current life is, Holly Nelson. Levi curled his. Lips menacingly. The next day, Levi went to Star Entertainment early in the morning. 
he saw Holly's posters all over the building's lobby. She appeared to be radiant and dignified in the pictures. She was only an insignificant model in the past. She managed to achieve her success today because of Morris. Ha, Levi sneered while examining the poster. Azure Dragon whispered beside him. I've made an appointment with Holly. Nelson in advance, sir. It'll be our turn to meet with her soon. Okay. A receptionist walked up to them after a short while. Mr. Dragon, please. Follow me. The president's office was located on the 36th floor. A few security guards stood near the entrance. They allowed Levi and Azure. Dragon to enter only after a thorough security check. Holly was working inside the office. She did not spare a glance at the visitors even after she heard movements at the door. Please wait for a moment, Mr. Dragon. I'll be there with you very soon. Levi voiced out at that moment. Aren't you doing well, Holly Nelson? Hum. Holly felt the voice sounded familiar. She slowly looked up and exclaimed when she saw the visitor in her office. Levi Garrison. The Protector Chapter 81. Holly was not afraid of Levi because of her current status. But she was reluctant to meet with Levi because she felt guilty towards Morris. Levi smiled. That's me. Why are you so nervous? Holly's legs were wobbling. But she put on a tough front. What are you talking about? I'm not nervous in the slightest. Levi took a seat on the sofa. I am here to visit you. You were the bridesmaid. For my wedding, after all. I am doing well. But we are not really close anyway, so there's no need for us to catch up with one another. Moreover, as you can see, I am busy now. So, you should leave immediately. Holly was quick to chase Levi away. Relax. I'm here to talk business. Levi beamed at her. What kind of business? Holly asked curiously. It's about a video that I think you'll be interested in. Holly rebuked him angrily. I am not interested in any video. Leave now. Perhaps you should take a look at the video before you say that. Levi. Suggested. Holly moved closer to him. What video is that? Levi showed her the video of Morris' death. Holly's face turned paper white instantaneously. She gasped after watching. The video. Where, where did you get the footage? You don't have to know about that. I am here to talk business with you. Levi kept the smile on his face. That's impossible. That video is fake. Why would I harm Morris Atkinson? He. Was the one who cheated on me in the past. Holly retorted. Levi got up from the couch. Well fine, I should leave then. Wait. Tell me what you want. Holly said. All right. I'll admit. I did harm him. But what about it? You're not much better than me. You know about the truth. Yet you decided to blackmail me instead of avenging your best friend. You. Are also a scum. What happened to you? Did the harsh reality teach you a lesson? Is that why you are blackmailing me? To maximize the benefit you can get from me. Holly was under the impression that Levi was desperate because he was recently released from prison. So he needed to blackmail her for a living. Little did she know, Levi was merely toying with her. I'll offer you a price. One billion. Levi smirked. What? One billion? Are you crazy? Why don't you go blackmail the garrison? Family instead. Holly was infuriated. Levi smiled. The garrison family will have the ability to resolve this issue if I leak this video to the public. But what about you? I, Holly panicked. But one billion is too much to ask from me. I cannot agree to that. 
Levi offered Holly a piece of his mind. There are four of you inside the video. And you're telling me one billion is too much to ask for? I'll give you one day. To collect the money. I will release this video to the public if I do not see the money by tomorrow morning. I shall take my leave then. Levi got up and left the office with Azure Dragon. Thump. Holly collapsed onto the sofa in despair. It's impossible for me to collect one. Billion even with my status as Star Entertainment's president. Frankly. Speaking, it is already a difficult task for me to gather 250. Million even if we distribute the amount evenly among the four of us. This. Isn't going to work. I have to discuss with all of them. Holly dialed a few numbers swiftly after. The numbers belonged to the few. People who stood beside her in the video, Philip, Kit, and Misty. The three of them were acquainted with Morris through Holly. They became. His closest friends, second only to Levi Garrison. But they betrayed him in the. End. The trio arrived at Holly's office before long. They were presidents in their respective companies now, with high net worth. Holly described everything that happened inside the office earlier to them. The Protector Chapter 82 What? A video? There's really a video. Misty was doubtful. Holly nodded. Yes. I've checked repeatedly. The video is real. Does that mean our crimes will be exposed once the video is released to the public? Philip asked grimly. Kit nodded. You're right. Everyone will know about the Garrison families. Involvement as well. They will definitely sacrifice us by that time. I believe all. Of us are quite familiar with Rick Garrison's tactics. Misty was on the verge of tears. Then what should we do now? Holly said helplessly. That's the reason why I asked all of you here. We need. To come up with a plan together. Is there any other choice? We can only pay the one billion to purchase the video. Otherwise, we will have to face our demises. Philip said. Yet. What else can we do? Kit was dejected. Guys, we are talking about one billion here. Each of us will have to cough up. Two hundred and fifty million. Are all of you willing to part with that sum of money? Misty reminded them. Do we have any other choice even if we're unwilling? Philip retorted. Bloodlust glinted in Holly's eyes. There is one other way. What? Everyone looked at her simultaneously. We will meet up with Levi Garrison and murder him on the spot. Holly. Showed her ruthless nature. The rest of the group exchanged glances and nodded. You're right. This. Problem can be solved with Levi's death. I'll spend a million to hire a few. Hitman. There's no need to waste a billion because of this. Holly nodded. All right it's settled then. I will contact the Hitman since I have some connections. Philip volunteered. Misty and I will pay for the fee. Kit offered. Then I will contact Levi and arrange the venue. Holly said menacingly. Holly wasn't anxious to contact Levi after they were done with the arrangements. She waited until 11 o'clock in the night before she dialed Levi's number. I've prepared the money, Mr. Garrison. Let's meet at Lufthansa Club at 12 o'clock. Remember to bring along the original video. Holly said. Levi agreed. All right. See you then. At that moment, Holly and the others were already there at Lufthansa Club. Philip was the club owner, so they chose that venue to facilitate the execution of their plan. I've hired five professional hitmen for one million each. Philip said. Okay. All we have to do now is wait for Levi's arrival. Holly was a little. Nervous. But she was more excited to murder Levi. Levi and Azure Dragon reached the club a few minutes before midnight. Holly welcomed them at the entrance. Then they entered a private room. Levi asked after he took a seat. 
Where's the money? How are you going to pay me? At that moment, Holly and the gang revealed a menacing smile on their faces. Do you think you deserve the money, Levi Garrison? You will not be able to spend the money anyway. Philip shrieked angrily. That's right. You're really a fool, Levi. You came here just because we asked. You too. Kit laughed in a sinister manner. Levi looked at Holly. What's the meaning of this? Hand over the original video now, Levi Garrison. I can consider sparing your life if you comply. Holly demanded. Bam! Five professional hitmen entered the private room. There's no use for you to struggle. They are all trained hitmen. You will never escape this place. Philip threatened Levi. Give us the video immediately. Or else, we'll kill you. Everyone urged. The Protector Chapter 83 Levi smirked. Regretfully, I did not bring the video with me. But I arranged for someone to send it over. I think he will be here soon. What? You did not bring the video with you. Holly and her friends were enraged. Kill him. Philip ordered. But Holly stopped them. Wait. Let's obtain the video first before we decide on doing anything. Francis Hicks arrived at Lufthansa Club with the video shortly after. Holly wanted to snatch the USB containing the video from Francis, but Levi was quicker. I can give you the USB, but you must pay me the money. Levi smiled. Kit shouted. You're still concerned about the money even under this kind of circumstance, Levi. Do you really think we've prepared any money for you? Let me be honest. Then. We will destroy the video today and murder you as well. Philip and. Misty laughed maliciously. Holly crossed her arms in front of her chest and sized up Levi in a pompous. Manner. You are as ignorant as Morris was on the day of his death. Levi slowly looked up when he heard Holly's words. All the colors drained from Holly and the others' faces when they met with. His eyes. What's with him? His eyes. They're so scary. In that moment, they thought they witnessed the gory and gruesome scenes. On the battlefield reflected in Levi's eyes. Screams and wails of agony. Reverberated beside their ears. They were completely petrified by Levi's frightening gaze. Click. Francis snapped his fingers. Bam. Crack. The door to the private room was bust open. Over a dozen men rushed into the room. Crackle, crackle. All five professional hitmen were left lying in a pool of blood before they could even react. The scariest part was when Holly and the others felt something pressed against the back of their heads. They broke out in cold sweat as clarity washed over them. This. Holly and her friends were dumbfounded when they saw the muscular men with various skin complexion surrounding them. You're all a bunch of dimwits, Holly Nelson. Do you think five professional hitmen are sufficient to kill this man? What a joke. Francis sneered. Holly, Kit, and Misty turned to look at Philip incredulously. Philip explained helplessly. I didn't know they're this weak. I hired them. Because they worked for the infamous Jack Jr. Jack Jr. was the son of Jack Smith. He shared a similar influence on New Vin. The underworld of Northampton. Jack Jr. operates a company providing security services, but in actual fact, it was a cover for a hitman organization. Philip spent five million to hire the hitman from him. But he certainly did not expect them to be so useless. Philip, Kit, and Misty were trembling fearfully. Holly, on the other hand, was relatively calm. She looked at Francis astoundingly. Who are you? They are here because of me. Levi said as he walked up to Holly. Chills traveled down Holly's spine. She asked frightfully. What, 
What do you want? I want to let you know the repercussions of committing a betrayal. Levi gave a forceful slap across Philip's face causing him to pass out. Immediately. At this moment, Holly was losing her mind. Her legs wobbled uncontrollably. As she sobbed unwittingly in terror. The Protector Chapter 84 Thump! Philip fell onto the floor. Misty and Kit yelped hysterically. I want all three of you to come to Morris' grave and repent three days later. Obey me, and I can consider sparing your lives. Otherwise, you will all end up like him. Levi patted Holly's cheek. They will have to pay for their sin with their lives. But I want them to repent in front of Morris' grave first. Levi left with his men afterward, dragging Philip's unconscious body with them. Holly and the others were rooted to their spots as they shivered continuously. They never wanted to be caught up in such a dreadful situation again in their lives. Levi said to Francis after they left Lufthansa Club. Buy me a coffin. The next day, a commotion broke out in front of the Garrison family's manor early in the morning. The scream startled every member of the Garrison family. Joseph Garrison hurried to the front door in his pajamas. What's going on? Everyone was puzzled as well. They were horrified to see the coffin placed in front of the manor's entrance. The striking red color of the coffin was an appalling sight to behold. The guards of the Garrison family looked at the coffin warily. No one knew what was inside the coffin because none of them had the guts to move closer. Who sent this coffin here? Joseph yelled. Who dares to provoke the Garrison family? Are they trying to court death? Jacob said coldly. This must be Levi's doing, father. He's sending us a warning. That's right. It must be him. Who else would have the guts to do this? Joseph ordered. Someone take a look at the coffin. I want to know what's inside. But no one dared to step forward because they were scared out of their wits. What if it's a bomb? Brian Garrison wanted to go, but he hesitated. At that moment, Rick Garrison, with his gentle appearance, moved closer to the coffin and shoved the cover. Everyone gasped when they saw the body lying inside the coffin. That's Philip Hardy. Rick recognized the person immediately. What? Everyone was shocked. Levi is quite something to track them down. I'll have to question Holly. Nelson in person now. Rick said. Holly, Misty, and Kit arrived at the Garrison family house after a short while. They explained everything and concluded Levi's ability to the Garrison family. He's a scary man. There were a lot of bodyguards from overseas beside him. Last night. The professional hitmen we hired were like toddlers when facing. Them. Holly recounted the terrifying experience. Humph. That's nothing to be afraid of. Can he ever outnumber our families? Force. Brian and the others were unfazed. Rick expressed his thoughts calmly. We should be more careful, nonetheless. I am acquainted with a group of mercenaries from overseas. I will bring them. Here since we have time to spare. Jacob smiled. That's great. Levi will surely face his doom by that time. Holly and her friends could finally relax after realizing the garrison families. Ample preparations. How dare Levi asked us to repent. He should just go to. Hell instead. I can't wait to see the surprises my son will be showing us two days later. Ben Garrison and his wife grinned smugly. They were Levi's adoptive parents. But they had always treated him like a servant. Brian and Victoria laughed wickedly. Oh, how we wish time would go. Faster. The Protector Chapter 85 While he was at home, Levi received a phone call from Zoe, asking him to visit the construction site. Surprisingly, Levi only saw Nuve's men working when he arrived. Zoe's workers were nowhere to be seen. 
Levi walked up to Zoe and asked. What's going on? What's going on? This is all because of you. My workers knew about my banishment from the Lopez family after the media reported the news. They did not want to be dragged into this mess, so they are on strike temporarily. The same thing is happening at Imperial Meadows too. Even my secretary left her job. What should I do now? Zoe stared into Levi's eyes. Levi could understand the workers' sentiment. The Garrison family is infamous for their cruelty. No one would want to offend them. It is a given. They would want to leave because even the Lopez family banished Zoe to save themselves. Levi scratched his head embarrassingly. I'm so sorry. I did not consider this outcome. Are you finally aware of the consequences of your recklessness? Why didn't you listen to me? Were you not satisfied with our current lifestyle? They Garrison family was not troubling you, and I am given the opportunity to handle this huge project. We had a great life, so why did you have to go to such great lengths to destroy it? Zoe bombarded Levi with volleys of questions. Levi took a deep breath and answered with a smile. You're right. We were living a peaceful life. But what should I do about Morris? Do you think I can be at ease, knowing how my best friend died and choose to do nothing? I, Levi Garrison, am a man of honor. I do not provoke others deliberately, but they crippled me and falsified crimes against me. They put me behind bars and robbed everything away from me. So how can you expect me to stand by and watch them get their way? You should be the person to know me best. I never take anyone's possession by force, but I will not allow others to step all over me and remain indifferent. Especially when this matter concerns my best friend's life and my previous glory. I must retrieve the things that were taken away from me at all costs. Zoe looked at Levi in disbelief. She gained revelation at that moment. I've always neglected Levi's feelings. He is shouldering plenty of burdens as well. Zoe hugged Levi and sobbed in his arms. I will stay by your side through. Thick and thin, Levi. She glanced at the construction site and continued. I may lose my life anyway in two more days. So why do I have to care so much? About all these things. Levi was touched by Zoe's unwavering love for him. Do not worry, Zoe. I will handle this. Okay. I believe in you. Zoe said what she had to because she wanted to encourage Levi. But she did not have any faith in Levi because she could not picture his victory against the Garrison family. Anyway, I've steeled my resolution to accompany him to the end, even if we will die together. The promised day was nearing in a blink of an eye. The next day would be the day Levi would confront the Garrison family as he vowed. Zoe prepared a lot of dishes that night and even brought out the best wine they had. Levi suddenly said after he gulped a few glasses of wine. Tomorrow will be the day we prosper, Zoe. Should we give your family another chance to join us? You. Zoe's first instinct was to rebuke Levi. He's still talking big. But Zoe smiled. Warmly after she considered the possibility of them dying together the next day. Really? Will we prosper? I should do my best to please him in our final moments. The Protector Chapter 86 Levi thought that Zoe had believed him, so he said immediately, Of course. It is real. From tomorrow onwards, Levi Group will be returned to us. Isn't it a piece of great news? He stared at Zoe and said in a serious tone, Truth be told, I cannot stand every single one from the Lopez family. However, they are your family. Members after all, 
so I would like to give them another chance. As long as they agree to support us tomorrow, and accept the garrison. Families' repentance and apologies, I will support them. After it is over, Levi. Group will take them in and boost the status of the Lopez family in North. Hampton. Zoe felt really vexed listening to Levi's boasting. It was impossible. Firstly, the Garrison family would not apologize. Secondly, Levi was certainly unable to defeat the Garrison family, and would not be able to retake the Levi group. However, considering the last day, Zoe did not interrupt him. All right, then please give the Lopez family another chance. Zoe smiled slightly. Levi successfully got through to Harry's phone. Levi, what are you doing? Calling for help? Let me tell you, there is no way. Harry's frustration could be heard from the other end. Levi laughed, for the sake of Zoe, I have called you Grandpa. I have decided to give you a chance. As long as you support me and stand by my side tomorrow, I guarantee that the Lopez family will replace the garrison. Family. Scram. Are you a lunatic? What is going on in your head? Harry shouted. Into the phone. After that, Levi then made another call to Aaron. In the end, Aaron gave him a harsh scolding too. By the way, I will come and pick Zoe up tomorrow. If you want to court. Death, then go ahead on your own. Beep beep beep. Aaron hung up the call angrily. This time round, Levi kept quiet. The Lopez family is missing out on such a brilliant opportunity. Zoe laughed. It is definitely going to end up like this. Who would believe all these? Unless he was a fool. Zoe teased, it's all right. Rejecting you will be their greatest regret in life. We gave them the chance, but they did not want it. MMM, indeed. The Lopez family has missed the chance. Before they slept at night, Azure Dragon called. God of War. The commander-in-chief of the First Army of Northampton just sent a message saying that everything is ready. The 100,000 soldiers are ready to go. Good, listen to my command, answered Levi. Levi and Zoe woke up very early the next day. Then, they drove Zoe's car to Morris' grave. On the way there, Zoe saw tanks passing by and a line of soldiers marching forward. The sight of it was beyond her imagination. There was an approximate number of tens of thousands of people. A long line of tanks had formed with no end in sight. In addition to helicopters flying around in the sky, there were also bombers flying by at low altitude making a loud humming sound. Zoe was astonished. She asked, is there going to be a military exercise? Levi laughed and said, I guess so. Isn't it such a large-scale exercise? I have never seen one with such a scale. Before. Zoe was shocked. Why are there bombers and cannons here? Very soon, the both of them had arrived in front of the grave. Noob's men had already prepared the grave, while Levi had also erected a tombstone. Zoe paid her respects to Morris. Until now, Zoe could not believe that Levi was able to defeat the garrison. Family. Was Levi going to do this alone? She thought that Levi would find some people to help him out. Seeing that he was going to be on his own, Zoe was extremely disappointed. No. She was in despair. Secondly, Levi was certainly unable to defeat the Garrison family, and would not be able to retake the Levi group. However, considering the last day, Zoe did not interrupt him. All right, then please give the Lopez family another chance. Zoe smiled slightly. Levi successfully got through to Harry's phone. Levi, what are you doing? Calling for help? Let me tell you, there is no way. Harry's frustration could be heard from the other end. Levi laughed, for the sake of Zoe, I have called you Grandpa. I have 
decided to give you a chance. As long as you support me and stand by my side tomorrow, I guarantee that the Lopez family will replace the garrison. Family. Scram. Are you a lunatic? What is going on in your head? Harry shouted. Into the phone. After that, Levi then made another call to Aaron. In the end, Aaron gave him a harsh scolding too. By the way, I will come and pick Zoe up tomorrow. If you want to court death, then go ahead on your own. Beep beep beep. Aaron hung up the call angrily. This time round, Levi kept quiet. The Lopez family is missing out on such a brilliant opportunity. Zoe laughed. It is definitely going to end up like this. Who would believe all these? Unless he was a fool. Zoe teased, it's all right. Rejecting you will be their greatest regret in life. We gave them the chance, but they did not want it. MMM, indeed. The Lopez family has missed the chance. Before they slept at night, Azure Dragon called. God of War. The commander-in-chief of the First Army of Northampton just sent a message saying that everything is ready. The 100,000 soldiers are ready to go. Good, listen to my command, answered Levi. Levi and Zoe woke up very early the next day. Then, they drove Zoe's car to Morris' grave. On the way there, Zoe saw tanks passing by and a line of soldiers marching forward. The sight of it was beyond her imagination. There was an approximate number of tens of thousands of people. A long line of tanks had formed with no end in sight. In addition to helicopters flying around in the sky, there were also bombers. Flying by at low altitude, making a loud humming sound. Zoe was astonished. She asked, is there going to be a military exercise? Levi laughed and said, I guess so. Isn't it such a large-scale exercise? I have never seen one with such a scale. Before. Zoe was shocked. Why are there bombers and cannons here? Very soon, the both of them had arrived in front of the grave. Nuv's men had already prepared the grave, while Levi had also erected a tombstone. Zoe paid her respects to Morris. Until now, Zoe could not believe that Levi was able to defeat the garrison. Family. Was Levi going to do this alone? She thought that Levi would find some people to help him out. Seeing that he was going to be on his own, Zoe was extremely disappointed. No, she was in despair. The Protector Chapter 87 Zoe stopped worrying. After all, she was originally going to die with Levi. So what was there to worry so much about? Shortly after, a havel sped by. Aaron and Caitlin alighted from the car. Levi had thought that Aaron would stand by his side to show him support. However, he did not expect Zoe's parents to come and drag Zoe into the car. Zoe screamed in shock, Dad, Mom, what are you doing? Why are you pulling me away? You cannot stay here and court death with this useless piece of trash. Aaron shouted. That's right, you need to come with us. We won't let you die with him. Caitlin held tightly on Zoe. Zoe finally realized why her parents came. They wanted to bring her away. She was starting to feel anxious as she was about to be dragged towards the car. Zoe struggled and shouted at Levi for help, Levi, save me. Save me. Dare he? If he dares, then I will make sure both of us perish together. Aaron stared angrily at Levi. Levi looked at Zoe coldly, and did not take any other action. In the end, Zoe struggled to break free but to no avail. Aaron held on to her. As Caitlin drove away, she looked out of the windows at Levi, who was standing there alone and cried bitterly. It seemed that they were going to go on their separate ways from that moment onwards. However, no matter how much Zoe cried, Aaron was not going to give in. After taking Zoe home, Aaron and Caitlin made sure that she was taken care of. 
It was the Lopez family's wish to bring Zoe home. There was no need for her to die with Levi. As the Lopez family had ended their relationship with Levi, they would not turn up today. After Zoe left, Azure Dragon, Kieran, Phoenix, Black Tortoise and White Tiger. The five Great Wars Regiment appeared in black suits. Azure Dragon had even brought Rowan and his wife over. Has Ms. Lopez left already? Azure Dragon asked. It's good that she left. I do not wish to reveal my identity yet. Levi said. Kieran walked over to Levi and said, God of War, the Commander-in-Chief of. The First Army reported that they are ready and prepared to set off. They are. Stationed three kilometers away and can reach in ten minutes. After hearing what was said, Levi nodded his head. MMM, tell them to wait. For my command. Understood. Kieran nodded his head. At this moment, Nuv arrived. He did not bring many people with him. Those who came were big shots, like Trey. They had donned their suits. Several people stood by after receiving Levi's orders. Azure Dragon stood beside Levi and said, God of War has just received news. That the Garrison family is about to set off. At the Garrison family's manor. Joseph waited for everyone in the Garrison family to suit up and get ready to leave. Jacob was growing really impatient and could not wait any longer. His son, Ashton, was still lying in the hospital. The chances of him waking up were really slim. He swore that he must definitely tear Levi up into a dozen pieces. As for Rick, he had always looked gentle. There was a smile on the corner of his mouth, which made him look very mysterious. Brian glanced at Victoria and said, My little brother was crippled six years ago because of me. I also made you crippled this time round. Do you still remember this baseball stick? That's right, it's the one I used six years ago. Ha ha ha. Brian revealed a cruel smile as he tossed the baseball stick into the car. Trunk. Ben and Winnie smiled coldly. Son. If not for the fact that we took you in. You would have died. Do you actually want to kill us now? This is ridiculous. Holly also arrived together with two others. The Protector Chapter 88 Quickly. We cannot wait to see Levi embarrassing himself. Joseph leaned against the car door and waited with a walking stick in his hands. Dad, all of us are prepared. Also, the mercenaries that third brother has hired are in their positions. Ben said. Joseph nodded his head, MMM, the garrison family alone can get rid of Nuve several times, let alone Jack Smith and the others. This time around, I will get rid of Levi and at the same time, let everyone in Northampton know how powerful the garrison family is. Dad, Jack Smith is here. Rick ran over. There was indeed a black car parked in front of the garrison family's manor. Entrance. The second car was a Lincoln limousine. The car door opened, and an old man walked out. He wore a black traditional Chinese jacket, with two legendary pearls in his hand. He looked like he was well into his twilight years, giving people the impression that he was dying. However, there was a light in his eyes that one could not simply ignore. Especially when he lifted his head, there was a powerful presence lingering. That made people breathless. He was Northampton's leading mafia boss, Mr. Jack Smith. As the name implied, the King of Northampton was here. There were thirteen people following behind Jack Smith. They were named Northampton's Invincible Thirteen. Thirteen powerful experts. The Invincible Thirteen used to be like Nuve and were mafia bosses in their own districts, but they were vanquished and came under Jack Smith as his underlings. Not only that, Jack Jr. was also here. He was part of the Palm Killer organization. Seeing that Jack Smith had arrived, Joseph brought everyone from the Garrison family over to welcome him. 
with the Garrison family's current abilities, they did not dare to compete with him. Today, we invited Mr. Jack Smith here to help us show our prowess. There is no need to take action. Your presence alone would definitely scare Levi away. He will not dare to do anything to us. Joseph laughed. Jack Smith did not care. It was already a waste for him to come down today. Just to make an appearance on behalf of the Garrison family. He looked at Joseph and asked, What about the project you were talking about? Joseph immediately responded, Tomorrow. We can proceed tomorrow. It turned out that the Garrison family had lured Jack Smith over with a lucrative project so that he was willing to make an appearance. Good. Jack Smith nodded his head. Another car arrived shortly. A middle-aged man alighted from the car. This is Smiling Buddha, who controls half of Northampton's entertainment clubs. He keeps a very low profile, but apart from me, no one else is his opponent in Northampton. Jack Smith introduced the middle-aged, chubby man to the Garrison family. The chubby man laughed. He looked friendly and kind, but he was actually very cruel. As for this person, he is Bob, who is engaged in the jade jewelry business. He is well known in Northampton, and Nuve has suffered a big loss before. Thanks to him. And Jimmy Jacuzzi. Good old Jimmy is outstanding. He owns six casinos in Hong Kong, Macau, and other places. He is involved in all kinds of businesses. Jack Smith introduced everyone. The Garrison family were in awe of their presence. All of these impressive figures from Northampton's underground world showed up this time. Levi's supporter was only Nuve. There was more than a dozen of them here. Who could compete with Nuve and were even better than him? All of these people, combined with the Garrison family's power, would mean that Levi was in hot soup. Levi was unable to beat them, given their mighty forces. Jack Smith looked at his watch, and said, It's time. Let's set off. Let's go. Immediately, a long line of cars set off toward Morris Grave. The Protector Chapter 89 Many people were surprised to see a long line of vehicles. What is happening in Northampton? The Lopez family was shocked to find out what was happening. Jack Smith, Smiling Buddha, Bob, and the others have all gone there. It is frightening. Samuel shook in fear. Harry drew in a breath. Oh my God! Levi is going to be in deep trouble this time. This is really scary. I heard that there are thousands of people involved. It is fortunate that we have broken all ties with him in time. If not, the Lopez family would be involved as well. Sean and the others drew in their breaths fearfully. Henry laughed. Levi, you are really naive. What do you have to fight with? The Garrison family? They have become so powerful. Zoe had received the news that there was a long line of vehicles on the roads in Northampton. She was sobbing hard, knowing that there were so many people and vehicles heading in a certain direction. How is Levi going to manage this on his own? You are not allowed to go anywhere. Even if Levi is dead, you cannot go anywhere. Aaron and Caitlin stared fixedly at her. The Garrison family and Jack Smith's army proceeded to the grave in a majestic manner. On the way there, Jack Smith said to Joseph, Francis Hicks is actually not coming. Joseph laughed. He is a mafia boss who likes to remain hidden, so he probably does not want to participate in such trivial matters. Jack Smith laughed too. That's right. If not for the project, I won't turn up. Either. Everyone was waiting in front of Morris' grave. Rowan and his wife were a bit worried, and could not help but persuade Levi. Levi, why don't we just forget about this? The Garrison family is too powerful, and we cannot beat them after all. Levi smiled and reassured them, 
please rest assured. I will be able to manage the garrison family. Nuve, Trey, and the others also laughed. No matter who they are, they will succumb to us obediently. Very soon, there was a sound of explosion. Everyone saw the impressive line of cars. Luckily, the surrounding area was big and deserted enough to accommodate them. Rowan and his wife were shocked at the vast number of vehicles. There were at least tens of thousands of them. Most of them were MPVs and trucks. The number of people inside these trucks was unimaginable. The cars in front were luxury limousines. One of the car doors opened, and Joseph and the others got down slowly. Everyone from the garrison family held their heads up arrogantly. They were high-spirited. Their purpose today was not only to get rid of Levi and Nuve but also to show the garrison family's powerful connections to the whole of North Hampton. They had an air of arrogance around them and completely disregarded Levi. After seeing them alighting from the cars, Nuve, Trey, and the others went pale. Northampton's Jack Smith. Jack J.R. Smiling Buddha. Bob. Jimmy. They uttered out all their names in astonishment. In Northampton, they were the real big shots. As compared to them, Nuve and Trey were mere gangsters. Any one of them was able to get rid of Nuve and Trey. I've got no idea what benefits the Garrison family has offered them, but there are so many of these big shots gathered here. Nuve drew a sharp breath. At the sight of Nuve, Trey, and the others looking at them in shock, all the members of the Garrison family laughed. Things were proceeding according to their expectations. Nuve and the others saw the King of Northampton like a fearful mouse. Spotting a cat. They could not help it. The Protector Chapter 90 However, they saw Levi standing there like an upright spear. He had an indomitable spirit and looked inspiring. The garrison family members looked angry. Levi, do you not realize that danger is about to befall you? Joseph snorted. Levi laughed and nodded his head when he saw the garrison family looking at him. Brian and Victoria smirked. Let's see how you are still able to keep up that smile of yours later. That's right. Your supporter, Nuve is nothing more than an ant. Ben and his wife could not continue watching this. As for Jack Smith and the other big shots, they were just for show. The real trump card was of course their underlings. Gosh! The Invincible Thirteen are here. This is the first time. When Nuve, Trey, and the others saw Jack Smith and the thirteen men behind him, they drew in their breaths. The Invincible Thirteen was the group of master experts in Northampton. For most cases, one or two of them were enough to bring things to order. All thirteen never appeared together like this before. Now that all of them had shown up, something major was about to happen. A large group of people followed behind the Invincible Thirteen. There were hundreds of people, all dressed in black, with weapons strapped to their waists. Jack Smith had revealed his trump card. There was a gathering of five hundred thugs. Not only that, Smiling Buddha, Bob and Jimmy's subordinates also appeared. At once, they followed behind the Invincible Thirteen. There were about a thousand people in total. With such a massive scale of people present, something was definitely up. The garrison family also did not lack resources and men. They too took out their trump card. They had spent a sum of money to hire a lot of security personnel. So there were about 500 people in total. Rick was cautious, so he had hired a group of mercenaries. Even though there were just a few dozens of them, they had the necessary weapons with extremely strong combat power. All in all, there were about 2,000 people. Nuve, Trey, and the others felt fear and trepidation in the face of disaster. Their hearts were in their mouths. There are too many people. Rowan and his wife were too shocked as they witnessed such a sight. 
There were too many people after all. Seeing the mass of people behind him, Jack Smith commented, Mr. Garrison. You are making a big fuss. Just 10% of them will do. Joseph laughed in embarrassment, sorry. I am quite cautious in my dealings. Because I want to avoid the possibility of making mistakes. All right, then. Today, I, Jack Smith will give you a bit more power. Jack Smith waved his hand. Nearly 2,000 people surrounded the cemetery, stood guard and kept watch on all three levels of it. Not even a bird could get in. They looked like they had the intent to kill as they gripped tightly on the weapons around their waists. At the sound of a command, they would rush out and slash intruders into pieces. Jack Smith stepped forward and sneered, Nuve and others, are you not going to kneel down already? Yet. Yeah. You guys do have some guts to think of competing with us with that little bit of capability of yours. Bob, smiling Buddha, and the others laughed grimly. Nuve and Trey were boiling with rage when they saw Jack Smith mocking them. King of Northampton, you are right in saying that we have always respected you. But it is impossible for us to do so today. Seems like all of you want to protect Levi with your lives. What benefits have you gained from him, I wonder? All of you are willing to be his slaves. Jack Smith teased. Nuv snorted, Jack Smith, you will never understand who you're facing. Today. Ha 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 ha. After hearing what he said, the rest laughed out loud. Isn't he just another piece of trash that has been released from prison? The Protector Chapter 91 Ha 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 Nuve and Trey sneered this time round. It made Jack Smith feel strange. His status and identity are what all of you desire and aim for. After Nuve said this, everyone began mocking him again. No one could believe that a person who had just been released from prison would actually be someone so powerful and admirable. Rick, who was more prudent, digested Nuve's words properly to figure out what he meant. It seemed like Levi had a bit of power and status now. He could be because he had met a benefactor in prison. But so what? No matter how brilliant he was, he was of no match to Jack Smith. Also, he could not deal with so many groups working together. No matter what, Levi only had one way out and that was death. Levi waved his hand. Nuv and Trey kept their mouths shut, and stood at a corner obediently. Levi looked carefully at Jack Smith and the others, then laughed and said. Jack Smith. Impudent brat. Do you think a B asterisk starred like you have the right to address the King of Northampton this way? Joseph shot angrily. That's right, such a piece of trash like you does not even have the right to talk to the King of Northampton. Ben stared furiously at Levi. Levi curled his lips into a smile. Joseph, the garrison family's connections and strength are incredible. You are stronger than I thought. The garrison family was capable to summon such a huge army. It was. Enough to prove that they were a rich and powerful family in Northampton. Ha ha ha. Do you now know our strength? Kneel down now, if you want us to. Spare your life. Brian and Victoria laughed. Levi faced the bunch of clowns and sneered, I have given you a whole month to think about this. Haven't you actually considered why I have so much confidence? After listening to Levi, the garrison family was shocked. Brian quickly regained his senses and shot back immediately, Humph, isn't. Knew the source of your confidence? Do you think we are stupid? We have. Checked thoroughly. Nuv and you were in prison together and that was. Where you met him. Upon listening to Brian's words, Levi laughed aloud. Ha ha ha. Seems like. Ashton is not awake yet. He will tell you everything once he wakes up. At the mention of Ashton, Jacob went insane and exclaimed angrily, I will. 
definitely not let you off today, Levi. You turned my son into a vegetable. I will kill you today. Levi could not be bothered with Jacob's crazy antics. He looked at Rick and said, My favorite third uncle who treats me the best, have you not given any thought about why and how we have come to this? At this moment, Rick's facial expression changed. He had indeed felt that Levi was not behaving like usual this month. But he could not pinpoint why or how. Everything looked reasonable on the surface but it also seemed unreasonable at the same time. Rick felt that something was amiss after hearing Levi saying such a thing. Levi was an intelligent man. Didn't he know that even with Nuv's ability and support, he would not be able to shake up the Garrison family? If so, then why would he want to challenge them? Even with so many big shots from Northampton present, why did that not affect Levi? That meant that he had enough resources and strength to counter the Garrison family. He swept his gaze past Levi, and caught sight of the five men behind him. Azure Dragon was amongst them. Rick felt that the five of them looked very unusual. They seemed to possess special powers and had a unique aura. What was more, they looked indifferent, as if the presence of two thousand people did not matter at all. MMM? Doesn't that person look a bit familiar? The person in front of him, Azure Dragon, looked a bit familiar, but Rick could not remember where he had seen him. Are these five people Levi's hidden trump card? The Protector Chapter 92 Ben did not think so much. He stared at Levi and smirked, You brat, are you not going to greet your parents now that they are here? Levi's adoptive mother, Winnie, looked at Levi in disdain. If I knew that you were going to betray us, I wouldn't have picked you up from the streets. I should have let wild dogs attack you and leave you to die. A B asterisk starred like you. Shouldn't be allowed to survive. Breathe. Upon receiving his adoptive parents' harsh remarks, Levi took a deep breath. If not for the fact that they had adopted him, these few sentences were enough for him to chop their heads off. He was bitterly hurt. His adoptive parents actually treated him like this. I really hate this. This is the most heartbreaking thing in my life. Ben's words pierced Levi's heart. Honestly speaking, we never think of you. As our son. You are merely our tool. Levi's adoptive mother, Winnie added, that's right. We only had one motive. When we adopted you last time. You would take up another place in our. Family and so we can receive an extra share of the garrison family's inheritance. That's it. Otherwise, do you think we will raise a b asterisk starred like you? The garrison family spoke in unison, yes, our family has valuable connections. Do you think you are good enough to be in this family? You are merely a wild dog with impure blood in you. You are not worthy to be part of the garrison family. Victoria was still unable to see the truth, so she stared at Levi. Levi, are you still thinking of overthrowing the garrison family? Stop dreaming. It's not enough just because you have got Nuv on your side. He is merely an insignificant aunt. Levi then broke into a laugh again. I have already given you all a month to think about it. Why are all of you still behaving like foolish pigs? Do you really think my supporter is Nuv? Do you think he dares even if I lend my courage to him? Levi raised his voice. No, Mr. Garrison. Nuv and the others fell to their knees in utter shock. At this point in time, everyone at the scene saw that Nuv was fearful of Levi. He has another hidden trump card that we do not know about. Rick thought about it and a scary thought flashed past his mind. Levi looked at Holly and laughed. Now that you are in front of his grave, don't you feel a bit of remorse? Don't you think that Morris is looking down at 
you from up above. To be honest, Holly was feeling a bit remorseful. However, she lifted her head and said arrogantly, Hmm, it's better that he is. Dead. If he were still alive, would I be able to live so comfortably now? He should be glad that he was able to be of value to his goddess as a substitute. Levi smiled. So you don't feel the need to repent at all? Of course. Levi then looked at the garrison family members again. Do all of you not feel an ounce of remorse too? Spit. You are a beastard and that is another beastard who is dead. What is there for us to repent? The garrison family kept labeling them as B asterisk starts. Rowan and his wife were in tears. Their son died a terrible death, and yet he was cursed and labeled a B asterisk starred. Who could withstand such injustice? Joseph was furious and exclaimed in anger, King of Northampton. May I trouble you to take action? I cannot watch this any further. Jack Smith nodded his head. All right. As you wish. I do not want to see them still standing. Jack Smith commanded for everyone to charge ahead. Vroom. At this point in time, a revving sound came from outside. Everyone turned their heads to look in the direction of the cars arriving. The most frightening thing was the sight of a police car in the middle of those cars. The Protector Chapter 93 The thugs stopped temporarily and looked behind. Jack Smith smiled after taking a glance. Mr. Garrison, you really impress me. Are there more people coming? Is there even a police car? This is really impressive. However, Joseph, Rick and the rest of the Garrison family were dumbfounded. They stood there, at a loss. The Garrison family had exhausted all their resources, and all their connections were already present at the scene. Why are there more people coming? Joseph questioned immediately, Jack Smith, didn't you invite these people? Jack Smith laughed. You are kidding, Mr. Garrison. All those who I have invited are already here. That's right. All our connections are here already. Bob, smiling Buddha, and the others responded. That is strange. Who are these people? This is bad. As soon as they realized something, they turned towards Levi. He is so calm. He must have invited these people here. Very soon, these cars stopped outside. A few people alighted from the police car. Captain of Patrol Squad Xavier Fields, Deputy Captain Derek King, and Captain of Criminal Investigation Team Alex Williamson. Jack Smith was very familiar with the people in the police department. He called their names out one by one. After listening to their names, everyone was struck. The Garrison family, in particular, was shocked to see the presence of the police. Ben grew extremely pale and was frightened. Brian and Victoria were trembling in fear. At this moment, some more people alighted from the other cars. At the sight of all these people, Jack Smith, Bob, and the others felt intimidated. Oh my God! Leader Mr. Jesse Nielsen, Deputy Leader Zeneth Fuller, Uptown. District Leader Draco Simmons, First Secretary Cedric Jones, and Commander of the Ministry of Construction and the Ministry of Land. Jack Smith was very familiar with these leaders from Northampton. He mentioned all of their names. He was going berserk at this moment. Why are they here? Even though Jack Smith was known as the King of Northampton, it was merely a nickname. There were many people who were above him in terms of rank and status in Northampton. He was extremely fearful of all these people before him. If all of them were to put in a bad word about him, he would cease to exist. Not only was Jack Smith afraid of their presence, but Bob and Smiling Buddha were also fearful. These people were their enemies. Although the Garrison family was different from them, they were also afraid of the presence of these big shots. They were more fearful of the purpose of these people's arrival. Why are they 
here? Rick was very quick to notice that Jesse, Xavier, and the others had donned black suits with a white flower pinned to their chests. It was apparent that they were here to pay their respects to Morris. His head was about to explode at this moment. Rick tried to reassess Levi again. Just who exactly is he? Even these big shots are here to pay their respects to Morris. Jesse and the others walked over. Xavier furrowed his eyebrows, and yelled. Make way. The thugs were shocked by Xavier and carved out a path for him to walk. Through. They were drenched in perspiration as they looked on at Xavier and the others walking past. Jack Smith, Joseph, and the others stood on the other side of the path, waiting. Anxiously. At the sight of Jesse and the others, they went over to welcome and greet. Him. Xavier yelled coldly, Scram. Don't block the way. Jack Smith and the others were shocked and stood aside, not daring to move. Jack Smith took out his handkerchief to wipe away the perspiration on his forehead. Joseph was so frightened that his blood pressure rose and he almost fainted. Everyone could only stare as Jesse and the others walked towards the grave. The Protector Chapter 94 When they arrived in front of the grave, everyone simply nodded their heads. To Levi and paid their respects to Morris. Then, they walked towards Rowan and his wife to offer their condolences. Rowan used to work in the department, so he knew who these people were. He cried tears of joy and lifted his head, smiling, Morris. Can you see this? Your leaders are here to pay their respects to you. The elderly couple started crying. Dozens of big shots from Northampton paid their respects to Morris, one at a time. Jack Smith was disappointed as he witnessed this scene. They all seemed to have fallen into an icy cold cavern. Gradually, they understood why Nuve and Trey would sacrifice their lives for Levi. Jack Smith now understood why Francis Hicks did not want to come, and even warned him not to. Francis Hicks knew about this. We cannot get involved in this matter. Holly, Kit, and Misty saw the top leaders of Northampton paying their respects to Morris. They had mixed emotions in their hearts. After all, they did not know what was in store for them. I. Joseph's legs could not stop shaking. He was speechless. Jacob too had no intention of seeking revenge anymore. Rick was extremely confused. This, this, this. Ben was too shocked to say anything. Winnie stared at Levi in disbelief. She did not expect this. Brian, Victoria, and the others were all flabbergasted. What is Levi's actual identity? Why are all the leaders here? Even those with strong connections could never bring all these people. Together. A million doubts and questions filled their heads. My condolences, Mr. Atkinson. After these big shots from Northampton paid their respects, they left. Without staying any longer. They also did not look at Jack Smith or anyone else. This made the others present very confused. What is happening here? Ben laughed all of a sudden. I get it now. Mr. Nielsen and the others came. Here to pay respects to Morris out of respect for Rowan and his wife. They. Used to old leaders in the department after all. That's right. After knowing that Levi has caused such a big commotion, it is. Only natural for them to come here and pay their respects. Joseph said. Immediately. Brian also thought it through. If Mr. Nielsen and the others are Levi's. Supporters, why did they not come and attack us, but left immediately? Instead. That's right, that must be it. Jack Smith also agreed. So, as long as we do not hurt Rowan's family and touch Morris Grave, we. Will be okay. As for the other people, we can do whatever we want to them. Jacob's eyes had a murderous look in them. He had wanted to kill and get rid of Levi a long time ago. Yes. I need to make sure that Levi kneels in front of me today. Joseph shook his walking stick. 
the thugs recovered from the shock they experienced earlier and looked fiercely at Levi once more. At this moment, Levi waved his hand to summon Azure Dragon and the rest to his side. Tell them that we are going to act. Levi commanded. Understood. Azure Dragon nodded his head. After that, he took out a walkie-talkie and commanded, Act now. Levi saw the garrison family members staring blankly at him. He smiled and said, I'm sorry for the delay and thank you for waiting. The real dish is about to be served. Brian exclaimed, Levi, what tricks do you have up your sleeve again? Whoosh! Just when Brian stopped talking, a signal flare was launched in all directions. Bang! Everyone was at a loss as they saw the signal flare exploding in the sky. The Protector Chapter 95 Jack Smith had never seen such a thing. He did not know what kind of messages these signal flares were sending. However, the mercenaries had a horrified expression on their faces. Upon seeing the signal flare, they knew that something major was going to happen. It was a signal flare specifically used by the military. This is not good. Mr. Garrison, we need to retreat as soon as possible. They head of the mercenary reported to Rick. However, Rick who was inexperienced in this aspect could not understand what he meant. Why should we retreat? We have yet to find out what exactly is happening. Rick responded coldly. Then we will retreat. We do not want the money anymore. The mercenaries knew what the signal flare represented. Thus, they wanted to retreat and leave. It was not necessary for them to risk their lives for money. Boom! Just when they were about to retreat, there was a sudden movement of the earth, and the ground under everyone's feet moved. All of them clearly saw the sand and stones tumbling and shaking under their feet. The vibrations became more intense and violent. Some people were unsteady and could not remain standing. It felt as though a giant earthquake was approaching. The mercenaries bent down slowly and placed their ears on the ground to listen. In an instant, their facial expressions changed. This vibration is too loud. In the past, they had experienced being surrounded by hundreds of enemy mercenaries on the barren battlefield, and the vibration then was loud enough. However, based on the current vibration and their previous experiences, they scale was much greater than they had encountered. It would be a rough estimate of about 100,000 people on the battlefield. 100,000 people? What kind of concept is this? He was unable to imagine it. Buzz buzz buzz. This time, there were bursts of low buzzing sounds in the air. Everyone looked up and was shocked to see small planes hovering in the sky. They could already feel the impending storm. What was worst was seeing these planes lining up in formation and flying around in groups, circling the sky above. Everyone was counting the number of planes in the sky. There were at least hundreds of them. Not only that, there were hundreds of helicopters dominating the lower airspace as well. They were densely packed and covered the entire sky for miles. The sky became dark and nobody could see a thing. The sheer number of these planes had completely covered the sun, blocking out all the sunlight. There was the sudden arrival of dozens of huge transport planes aimlessly hovering in the air. Boom boom boom. The ground below them was shaking violently. Many people were unsteady on their feet. Look. Someone standing on the outermost circle shouted, leading everyone to look. Behind. A few colossal objects appeared in their line of vision. When they finally saw them clearly, everyone's faces had already grown. Pale. They were all in complete shock. The colossal objects were a line of war chariots and battle tanks. They came in from all four directions. The mercenaries estimated the number to be at least a few thousand. It is an epic battle scene. Look. Everyone saw the infantry among the war chariots. There were so many of 
them, densely packed together, and they could barely see their individual heads. Click click click. The formation of battle tanks was followed by a large infantry. They came at a uniform, world-shaking pace. There are four columns in one regiment. As a rough estimate, we can see 20 groups. We can see about 20,000 people. But it is just a small portion. There are a lot more at the back. The main army. The mercenaries analyzed the situation using their professional expertise. The Protector Chapter 96 What? You can already see 20,000 people from here? Aren't there still at least thousands of tanks and armored vehicles? And thousands of airplanes? And helicopters? After hearing the shocking numbers, Jack Smith, Bob, and the others were about to explode in fright. This was definitely not something they could handle, let alone compete. Why are we here? Why can't we just live our lives comfortably? These gangsters and their subordinates trembled in fear. Their legs grew weak, and they almost fainted. They thought that they were only here to fight. Was there a need for airplanes, tanks, and artillery with tens of thousands of troops? The garrison family saw what was happening. A chilly stream of air rushed up to their bodies as if to freeze all the blood in them. This is frightening. Why are there troops here all of a sudden? How did this happen? What on earth is happening? Rick grew extremely solemn. He was extremely afraid that things were happening accordingly to what he had initially predicted. Jack Smith thought about it and said, Could it be a military exercise? This area is extremely suitable for it. Joseph took a few deep breaths. I also think the same way. I received a piece of news in the morning, saying that there are many tanks heading in this direction. It seems to be a military exercise going on, and we just happen to chance upon it. We seem to be in their way. Instead of thinking of the worst-case scenario, everyone wished to believe that it was a simple military exercise. Rick shook his head. Perhaps not. This has definitely got to do with Levi. All are loaded standard weapons. They have bullets in them. These are real. Guns and live ammunition. I guarantee it. The head of the mercenary. James, said in a serious tone. His experience, together with his subordinates were able to see clearly that. The guards had real guns and live ammunition. Hiss. Many people drew in their breaths at that instant. They were panicking. Boom boom boom. The war chariots and armored vehicles stopped one by one when they were. About 500 meters away from everyone. However, the infantry at the back passed by the war chariots and armored. Vehicles and continued to advance. It was a bone chilling sight. There were a lot of people on the vast plain. Click click click. The infantry was approaching, closer each time, and now everyone had a better view of the sheer number of them. Just now, we only saw a small part of the infantry. Now, the numbers have increased. We can see at least 40,000 to 50,000 people. There is about the same number of people at the back. Tell everyone this piece of bad news, there are about 100,000 people in strength. James stated the fact, and he was growing desperate and hopeless at reality. An infantry of such magnitude would absolutely sweep every single person on the battlefield away. With this fact in mind, everyone grew dead silent and despondent. There are 100,000 people. A full 100,000. I. 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 Jack Smith was so scared that his teeth chattered in fear, rendering him speechless for a long time. Click click click. The infantry stopped at a distance of fewer than 20 meters from everyone. Which was a good distance for their handover process. These soldiers looked ruthless, holding tightly onto their weapons that had 
been loaded, and took aim at everyone. There was no doubt that as long as they fired their weapons, the garrison family, Jack Smith and the others would be brought down immediately. In front of all these soldiers, they had no fighting power at all when they saw a series of cold muzzles pointed at them. Plop! 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 They dropped their weapons on the ground and raised their hands up in Surrender! The Protector Chapter 97 They would not even think about putting up a fight. There were at least 100,000 soldiers around. Many of them regretted it in their hearts. Why did they join the underground? World of all things? Seeing the army advancing towards them, Jack Smith and the other big shots grew afraid. The pearls that he had initially held in his hands went missing. The others, like smiling Buddha and Bob, felt their blood pressure rising. If not because there were people supporting them, they would have fainted and collapsed onto the ground. The Invincible Thirteen had also grown pale in shock. They did not even dare to lift their heads. Joseph was so afraid that he almost coughed out blood. The muzzles were directly pointed at them, so one more step from the soldiers would mean that the muzzles were about to come in contact with their brains. It was extremely terrifying. The mercenaries really hated Rick to the core. If they knew that this was going to happen, they wouldn't have been lured. Here by the handsome reward. They would lose their lives anyway, so how could they spend the money? At this point in time, there were dozens of transport planes in the sky, and the cabin doors opened. Whoosh whoosh whoosh. The paratroopers landed one at a time. Hundreds of helicopters also moved in the sky, circling above Joseph and the others. Everyone was able to see clearly that there was a famous sniper in the helicopter, and the sniper's rifle was aiming at them. There were even machine guns facing them, with their angles adjusted. The paratroopers descended continuously from dozens of transport planes. After landing, they turned their backs to Levi in a half-squatting posture and faced the garrison family with their weapons aimed at them. There were thousands of paratroopers, and they all happened to be guarding the open space. Boom boom boom. There was some movement on the outer circle. The cannons were pushed out with their muzzles pointed towards the sky. However, the garrison family, Jack Smith, and the others knew that they were facing another layer of doom. They were surrounded at all sides, and the large weapons and battle tanks. With guns had driven up so close to them. Even the helicopters in the sky were directed at them. They were completely surrounded this time round. There was no way they could escape from this. Frightening. Really frightening. The mercenary, James, and his counterparts were unable to withstand the pressure. They threw their weapons down raised both their arms up in surrender, and said, we were conned by the garrison family. We did not do anything. And then they lay on the floor and placed both hands on their heads. They looked pathetic. After that, Jack Smith responded and pointed at the garrison family. Immediately, everything is done by the garrison family. They invited us. Here saying that they have a project that is worth two billion. We are so clueless. We did not know. We are in the wrong. We are in the wrong. After saying so, Jack Smith and the other big shots followed what James did. They lay down on the ground and placed hands on their heads. Plop. Plop. Soon, all their subordinates followed suit. They also lay on the ground and placed their hands behind their heads, one after another. Following this, all the security personnel, bodyguards, guards, and the mercenaries hired by the garrison family also lay down on the ground. All of them pushed all the blame to the garrison family. In the blink of an eye, there were about a thousand or so people surrendering. The only people left standing were the garrison family members, Holly and the others. 
They looked right and left to see and realized that they had two choices. They could either continue to have the gun muzzles pointed at their heads. Or lie on the ground like what the rest were doing. They had no choice but to lie on the ground. Levi shouted from afar, Joseph. Upon hearing his name being called, Joseph grew so frightened. His whole body was cold and sweaty, and his face looked so pale as though he was seriously ill. He looked helplessly at Levi, who was standing not too far away. Ben. Winnie. Jacob. Rick. Brian. Holly. The Protector Chapter 98 Levi looked at the garrison family members and called their names out one by one. They did not dare to say a thing to Levi. It was because when Levi yelled out their names, it felt like he was declaring their deaths. Everyone stared at Levi blankly. They did not know what he was going to do. Everyone was utterly confused and was in complete shock. Levi placed his hands on his back and shouted at everyone in the garrison. Family, haven't all of you been guessing what my trump card is? I am telling. You now. This is my trump card. This magnificent army with thousands of men and weapons is my trump. Card. Levi continued yelling. The garrison family became deathly still after hearing what Levi said. Rick closed his eyes in despair. Things had actually turned out exactly the way he had guessed. Holly froze, and her teeth could not stop chattering. At this moment, there was a path created from the outer circle, surrounded by the crowd. A middle-aged man with two stars on his shoulder quickly walked towards the cemetery. King of War. He is the King of War. The garrison family was in shock as all of their facial expressions changed. Drastically. Everyone directed their gazes at the King of War walking towards the cemetery. They saw the King of War approach Levi and greet him respectfully, North. Hampton's commander-in-chief of the First Army, Garfield Perkins, is here to report to the chief. The assembly of the First Army is complete, chief. Please. Give further instructions. Many people could not believe their eyes upon witnessing this scene. It was indescribable. He was the king of war with 100,000 guards under his charge, yet he actually addressed Levi as his chief? Who on earth is he? Oh my god! It is unimaginable. This was a huge shock to the garrison family. They did not expect to see this. Thus, they could not accept the fact. Rick shut his eyes tightly. Garfield's action had cemented the thoughts in his head. Levi is the one. All right, fire the cannons. Levi commanded. Garfield waved his hand, and at that moment, dozens of cannons fired there. Shots at once. Boom. 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 The cannons fired, shaking the earth like thunderbolts. Mr. Morris, rest in peace. One hundred thousand soldiers shouted in unison. The voices of one hundred thousand soldiers sounded like thunder. It was a totally earth-shattering sight to behold. Rowan and his wife cried again. Levi had given Morris the best, most respectful, and most impressive send-off. Levi faced Morris grave and said emotionally, My brother, this is your belated send-off. After everything was done, Levi turned around slowly. At this moment, Azure Dragon and the others had changed into their military uniforms. Each one of them had a star on their shoulders. The Five Great Wars Regiment. Azure Dragon held a set of military uniform and brought it to Levi. Respectfully. The Phoenix King of War helped Levi to change out of his black suit and into the military uniform. After changing into the military uniform, Garfield and the other soldiers looked at Levi in awe. Standing in front of them was their leader of indomitable military spirit. He was their role model, the legendary god of war of Arudaya. There was a total of five stars on Levi's shoulder. He was the only god of war with five stars in the whole of Arudaya's history. At this sight, Rick had already fainted. 
Levi's imposing demeanor was unmatched. He stared at the Garrison family with indifference and said, Do you still remember the day you listed your company on the stock market? The God of War said that he would attend the dinner banquet. That was right. Because I am the God of War. The Protector Chapter 99 The Garrison family definitely remembered that they would hold a dinner banquet to celebrate the listing of their company. That day, the God of War had announced that he would come. That made the Garrison family excited, and they even thought that they would rise in fame and reputation. However, it was destroyed by Levi. The Garrison family then saw Levi as a sinner of their family. This was because Levi was the unlucky one who had disrupted their stroke of luck. After that, the Garrison family used all means and ways to seek connection with the God of War but was subsequently rejected. They were most puzzled by the fact that the God of War had come to the dinner banquet, but no one seemed to have noticed it. They finally understood it now. It was because Levi was the God of War. Why else would Levi cause such a huge commotion at the Garrison family's dinner banquet? Why did he give the Garrison family a month to make an official apology? Why did he warn the Garrison family time and again? Why did he have such confidence? Because he was the supreme god of war. Like what Melanie had said, the god of war was the commander-in-chief of the nine warzonies of Arudaya, and he could destroy the entire family really easily. It was already too late. Everyone had only reacted when it was too late. Levi put on his military cap slowly and solemnly. After wiping it clean, he looked at the 100,000 soldiers in front of him. Upon seeing this, Garfield shouted, God of War! God of War! The entire army shouted that exciting title in unison. They all looked at Levi, who was the first person in Arudaya who held on to such an impressive title. Their collective voices inspired awe throughout the empire. The Garrison family was also caught in fascination at this awe-inspiring sight. This man is Arudaya's god of war. Just by his presence, everyone knew that with him around, Arudaya would be protected and kept safe for thousands of years. Levi was firmly captured in the hearts of the millions of soldiers of Arudaya. However, the Garrison family members were knee-deep in regret. This was because Levi used to be a part of the Garrison family. He had worked hard and fought hard for the Garrison family. However, the Garrison family had done so many cruel things to him, even forcing him to leave home. Levi's gaze landed slowly on the Garrison family members. Then he said, Mildly, did you expect this? The bastard that should be eaten alive by wild dogs. Now I am someone you cannot even touch. Upon listening to him, the Garrison family were in shock. Levi looked at Joseph. I was supposed to be your grandson, but now I am the commander-in-chief of the nine warzonies of Arudaya with hundreds of thousands of soldiers under my command. Then, he turned to look at his adoptive parents. I was supposed to be your son, but now I am formidable enough to be worshipped by everyone. Next, he glanced at Brian and Victoria and said, I was supposed to be your little brother, but now I have the power and wealth to hold everything under my control. Finally, he gazed at Holly and said, I was supposed to be your husband's friend, but now there is no one else controlling me but myself. Levi's voice was like a knife slicing into the hearts of everyone. At this moment, everyone no longer felt pain but numbness. They were all completely numbed in shock. None of them could feel the pain from their nails digging deep into their palms. What did they miss? It was unimaginable. Everyone's minds went a total blank. They were unable to think clearly on these matters. The Garrison family thought about it. If they had not dealt so harshly with Levi in the past, how would the Garrison family have prospered? Perhaps they would have taken control of Northampton overnight and became the only powerful family, right? 
Holly thought about it. If she had not treated Morris badly in the past, who would she have become? Her husband's brother was a powerful figure in Arudaya. Perhaps she would have been the noblest woman in Northampton, right? However, there was no room for regrets. It was too late. They had to bear the painful consequences. The Protector Chapter 100 Take Revenge and Avenge Myself Levi's facial expression changed suddenly and he roared, When you raised me as a child, I was proud of the family name Garrison. I secretly swore that I would live my entire life repaying your kindness. I wanted to fight for the family. I wished for the Garrison family to be proud of me and my achievements. Then, when I made plans to develop the Garrison family into the strongest family in Northampton, do you know what you did to me? My parents, brother and sister-in-law betrayed me behind my back. My beloved family members broke my limbs and threw me into the trash. You even framed me and sentenced me to prison. Ah! Where is your conscience? Plop! Joseph could not endure such tremendous pressure, so he was the first to kneel down to the ground. Plop! Ben and the others kneeled down on the ground too. They could no longer withstand it. All of them were drenched in perspiration beneath their clothes and were struggling to breathe. Levi then looked at Holly. It's unfortunate that my friend, Morris, has always seen you as his goddess. He treated you like the most precious jewel on earth. Yet you betrayed him, and even plotted to kill him. Whenever you look down from the skyscrapers, have you ever thought of my friend, Morris? Ah! I've even reminded all of you that if you are not going to repent in front of Morris' grave, you will end up badly like what happened to Philip. Did my words fall on deaf ears? I plop. Holly also fell to the ground. Kit and Misty had already burst into tears. Joseph was the first to express his remorse. He exclaimed, We are in the wrong. We are in the wrong. We confess to all the crimes we have committed. We too know that we are in the wrong. We hereby repent. The others kneeled down and kowtowed to Levi, one after another. Holly and the others also kowtowed in front of Morris' grave. Their foreheads were bleeding from the impact. Ben continued to say, Levi, we have admitted that we are in the wrong. Seeing that we have nurtured you in the past, can you please forgive us? Can you spare our lives? Winnie added, Levi, to be honest, we have been treating you like our own. As long as you are willing, we are still your parents. The Garrison family will still be your home. Brian took the chance to continue, that's right. Levi. My wife and I welcome. You back to the Garrison family too. You can be the patriarch of the family. Right, Grandpa. Joseph said immediately, Yes, yes. That's right. Levi, as long as return to the Garrison family, you will be the patriarch. Jacob even said, Levi, Ashton deserved what you did to him. You should. Have beaten him to death. At the sight of the garrison family members' desperate looks, Levi sneered. And said, if not for my current identity, do you think you would be kneeling? Down here in repentance? Would you allow me to return to the garrison? Family? Or let me become the patriarch? You wouldn't. He could not stop laughing. All of you are only concerned about the benefits. Relationships and emotions mean nothing to you at all. Ever since I stepped into prison six years ago, I have severed all ties with the Garrison family. Today, I have a very simple goal. I want to seek revenge. Levi shot a cold and heartless look at every member of the Garrison family. Seek revenge. The 100,000 soldiers chanted in unison. It was an earth-shattering moment. Joseph vomited out blood at this instant. 
Looking at Levi's determination, he knew that the Garrison family was doomed. <laughs>